A lonely road lies ahead for those whose minds have been cracked asunder. Echoes of past deeds swirl and bubble to the surface, seeking to fracture the grail of our existence. A wary investigator must stay headstrong and resolved, for this treacherous path may falter judgment, if not careful. A voracious hunger stalks the shadow-filled streets, feeding on the impulses of both ne'er-do-wells and those of the strongest moral fiber. Candela and their circles often serve as the last line of defense, putting themselves in harm's way to contain, comprehend, and contend with the horrors that lie in wait. The Circle of the Vassal and the Veil. Assignment number 442, Ravage of Red Lamp. Welcome to Candela Obscura. Here in the country of Hale, within the city of New Fair, the evening grows late here in the Red Lamp District. As the parties roll on, the music and revelry echoes throughout the city streets. The occasional tinging of the cable car cruising through, grabbing those who are too drunk to stumble their way home safely and hopefully not too drunk to hold themselves safely on the cable car. You see people stumbling through the streets, you hear the music blaring out of various open doors of briefly available clubs before they shut once more. The fog itself, thicker and thicker as the night goes on, giving this kind of orange-red ambiance to the entire district of the city. As we pull up to the bottom of the Getaway Grand Hotel, Drifting up floor after floor after floor, above the thick blanket, the thickest blanket of the fog, till just a bit of that mist still remains. We come to the sixth floor, and here, through a window, we push in to see a middle-aged woman, hair pulled up high and uh, tightly bound curls, uh, looking into a mirror as she begins to pull her hair back. You would see she uh, well made up uh, necklaces, the beautiful little uh, emerald uh, necklace that hangs around her clavicle and other chains uh, as she continues to undo her hair before saying out loud, oh, this entire day has been a strange problem. So many voices from so many distant individuals as she pulls a pin out and the hair begins to tumble past her shoulders. Oh, if another one of these labor unions would Stop crawling up my ass and I can get some actual work done for this town. Throws down the pin onto a dresser. Maybe I can unwind just a little bit. Behind her, you see, sitting on the edge of a bed, a uh, younger gentleman in probably his late 20s or so, handsome square jaw, short brown hair, kind of gently curled, uh, lays back with uh, no shirt and just his pants, this long brown trousers, looks to her and says, my dear, but isn't that why you come and visit anyway? And she kind of smiles a bit and takes her blouse off before uh, setting her bracelets down on the side. Um, turns to him, her neck jewelry kind of glittering in the middle of the uh, bit of moonlight that's coming through the fog. Indeed it is, and it's been such a tough day. It looks like you'll have to help me relax. And, he smiles and reaches up and grabs her hand and pulls her towards the bed as we pull away from the window back into the red-lit fog of the night. 
here amongst the revelry and music and shouts and laughter and coughing, the sounds of pleasure begin to take the night beyond this window. And then screams. Two voices screaming shatter the night. Come the morning, you, Augie, up early, <laughs> having been here, spent a number of weeks here within the Gilded Rainbow, your new established homestead here, uh, you step out from your now private quarters, something you've not quite really had uh, officially for some time, to the smell of fresh coffee as Reggie uh, is sipping from his mug and currently going through the morning paper as you kind of step out of the room, kind of looks over her shoulder towards you and goes, Morning, Reggie. Good morning, Reggie. <laughs> what's, uh, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's going on? <laughs> I totally did. Sorry, that was my brain. That was, so I'd like to say good morning to myself as well sometimes. <laughs> good morning. I was going to say that you were correcting me or something. No. I'm going to say hello. No, you're good. Wait, good what? morning to you as well, Augie. Uh, <laughs> glad we're both present. <laughs> What's what's going on in the stories today? Anything good? Honestly, nothing quite uh, eye-catching. Currently, it seems like there's just a bit of discussion of, well, unrest down in the groundswell. Looks like there is uh, talk of uh, an incoming heavy shipment to the Hallow Harbor. Um, they're currently keeping some of the naval guardians near the vast chasm uh, to be doing inspections of uh, some sort of expected shipment from otherwhere. Beyond that, it looks like there are a number of performances to be happening from uh, local musicians, as well as one who's traveled quite a bit from the uh, Scarlet Wood above. Oh. Um, but uh, beyond that, nothing that catches the attention uh, that we normally look for, at least. Would you, would you like some coffee? Oh, yeah. Sets this cup down and goes over. Oh, I will go get it. I, did, I thought you were going to. No, serve. no, uh, I'm already up. It's let fine. me go get it. Let me go I, get I, it. I, I'll go get <laughs> it. I'll go get it. I know the drill. I know the drill. I've been here for a few weeks now. Fair enough. <clears throat> Ooh. You go over and. Yum. <laughs> just how you like it. Just how I like it. Just a little bit too sweet. <laughs> um, Six lumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right as you take in that first morning sip, feeling kind of like you know the warmth wash through you, uh, you hear the familiar sound of the bell in the front door jingle. Ting, ding, 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 ding. And coming through in the morning, you see uh, pulling the hood of their jacket back, uh, the familiar sight of Lightkeeper Alexandra walks in. Hi. Good morning, Augie. Reggie. You're not talking to yourself again, are you? It's like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> Long night. <laughs> Looks back to you. <sighs> How are you getting on here in your new quarters? I, I, I love it. It's really cool. And at night, you know, I, I go out and I'll grab a book and just immerse myself in the stories. I like it. Thank you again, truly. I'm happy to hear that. Reggie, you don't mind, do you? And she kind of like pulls Scar out of her jacket. He's like, no, I mean, <laughs> you're the light keeper. She goes ahead and lights it up a little bit. You can see as the flame as it sparks up the edge. Uh, her Did you one. Have another one of those. <laughs> it's a bad habit. I'm not about to spread it to you. I've mm. been smoking since I was eight. Then you can find your own smokes. Yeah, right. The flame of her lighter kind of lights up, and you can see that golden gleam of her one altered pupil. Uh, as she takes a bit of a puff, and as the smoke kind of drifts around her face, turns back. I assume you understand that my presence here means it's business. There's been, um, there's been an event, and uh, I think we're gonna have to call your circle together to take a look into it. So, uh, enjoy what bits of the morning you have left. The others will be up soon enough. We're gonna have a talk. And she goes and right. walks out the front of the library. Reggie's currently grabbing his coffee again and looks back towards you. She's a piece of work, I'll tell you that. Indeed she is. She's, um... She's seen some things. 
I can tell. Well, I guess I'll go ahead, and he goes and turns the sign in the front of the shop over to closed out front. The rest of you, throughout your morning experiences, receive familiar missives with the symbol of Candela Obscura sealed atop it, calling you back to the Gilded Rainbow bookstore. In the short order, in the next hour or so, the three of you begin to shuffle in one after the next until you have all arrived. As you all kind of gather within the center, Augie, you greet them as you do. Hello, hello, ma'am, <laughs> sir, <laughs> Jolly, Doctor. Come, uh, doctor, excuse me, we're not there yet, I understand. Please come to my beautiful, humble abode. <laughs> what a beautiful I, home you have, Augie. Yeah. Thank I, you. I take it you're getting on rather well. I do, it's pretty great. Mm. It's pretty great. Yeah. Ding, ding, the bell rings once more, and you watch as lightkeeper Alexandra steps back in, closing the door and latching it behind her. Um, you see she unwraps a small taffy, pops in her mouth a bit. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming on such short notice. It's going to be likely a busy day. Nods over to Reggie, who goes and closes the curtains, kind of giving the darker, ominous interior of this bookstore even further shade. Um, one of the lanterns is given a bit more oil and then placed on the center cabinet as you all kind of circle around it. Word has gotten around here that a primacy chamberwoman's hotel room was attacked last night. The chamber was apparently left in absolute disarray. She is nowhere to be found. The handful of folks who were wandering the streets at that hour recall seeing something massive rushing to or from the scene in shadow, like some beast. Whatever took her, it is likely not natural, and has definitely garnered Candela's attention. We would like you to investigate this, discover where this thing came from, where this chamberwoman is, and if she can be re returned safely. We may not necessarily agree with the politics, but whatever this is, we can only assume she's not the only one in danger the longer it's out there. Do we know anything more about this chamberwoman, about uh, if she may be particularly controversial, if she may be uh, someone who garners lots of enemies? Yes and yes. Mm. Uh, her name is Onette Ferris. And while not a upper level chamberwoman herself, she is deeply involved in the political circle that approves guild and import tariffs, both local and abroad. She is uh, deeply steeped in many unhappy business ventures within the city and is responsible for putting a bit of a, a bit of a bottleneck on opening wider trade with otherware. Hmm. So, this may be politically motivated, and if it is, then what are they using to get their vengeance? These are important questions to answer. Do you need anything for your journey? Do you have anything that will defeat shadow beasts on you? <laughs> Kind of leans back in her pocket, thinks for a second, pulls out a small, what looks like a like a corked vial glass. The interior of it just kind of shakes a little bit, and it looks almost like it has a like a thick syrupy, like molasses, like dark liquid on the inside that kind of coats the the interior of the glass. Tosses it to you. <laughs> Good thing it didn't break. Ah. Uh, won't last long, but you put that on the edge of any sort of blade or weapon, it'll all leave an impact on something uh, 
between worlds. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh. Anything else? Do you know the name of the, um, the institution where she was attacked? It was referred to as the Getaway Grand Hotel in Redland. I believe a few of you may be familiar with it. Maybe you've passed by. Maybe you've used its services. Yeah, of course. Um, but it's not used it very often. I'd recommend checking soon. For the longer we wait, the more interests will be garnered from other such factions within the city. Was there anyone known to be with her there? I do not know. We've not quite investigated ourselves. You're the first line of learning right. this info. Uh, I do believe the uh, periphery has already begun to scope out the location, as it is a crime scene of a very high-profile individual. So prepare yourselves to um, rub shoulders with the local police. Mm. Have but they closed <coughs> the establishment or merely cordoned off the room? As far as I can only imagine, just the room, it's still a place of business. Hmm. And uh, it wasn't a murder scene that we know of. I think that would have changed circumstances. Yeah. But uh, who knows, if they find something more dangerous, they might just do that, so time is of the essence. Right. We should go? Uh, we should. Uh, <laughs> I can't help but... The Getaway Grand is known for charging by the hour. I don't mean to assume anything about the uh, chamber woman's predilections, but if that is the case, then there's a witness somewhere. Mm. Yes. Oh. Like a, pr a, pr a prostitute. Yes. He, he means a prostitute. Of course. Yeah. That's, mm. that's, what, that's what it is. Of <laughs> course. <laughs> well, right. All kinds. I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. And once again, stay safe. Thank you. She exits. Ding, 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 ding. You know, in all so my years. We're in the varnish, right? Okay. Do you know, in all my years, here at Candela, I have never seen someone ask that question. What question? Do you have something to defeat sh shadow demons? Oh, I didn't think she really would. But Speaking uh, of which, uh, oh. I I'll certainly give it back, but I'd love to take a look. Of course. I don't carry blades, so Your I know you do, though. <laughs> Your directness is absolutely a... That is a bonus. Oh. Get a closer look at it, Howard. And I guess you hold up the light, now that you kind of put it there, uh, it it definitely has that like dark, semi-translucent, almost molasses texture to it when you hold it like between uh, the light and you. But there's almost like slivers of metal in there, like a liquid metal, almost like there's a mercury mixed in with it somewhere. Uh, do you still have your uh, your bleed detector? Always. I'd be interested to see what's in that vial. Hmm. As you detect the exterior of it, it does not have any bleed signature on it, which is welcoming. Hmm. Well, could be any number of things. A chemical mixture, there appear to be elements of metal inside. The world has a rich history of uh, lycanthropy and therianthropes, uh, half-human monsters, and a legend says usually uh, some sort of metal uh, works against them. It's just an idea, but um, why don't all this? Not fucking real. Is that real? That's real. That's Shadow real. beasts are real, Augie. Why couldn't werewolves be? I've never seen one, but uh, history is history, <laughs> and there's always a little bit of truth to every myth. That's quite interesting. Oh, keep it. Oh, all right. No, oh. put it in my pocket. Shall we? Let's. Uh, how far? Is the getaway ground from the uh, sight unseen? Uh, maybe about a five minute walk down the road. It's a little more central. Um, there's, you know, when you go through the uh, uh, the red lamp, 
there are a number of kind of streets that divide and corner office. It goes uh, right towards the center. There's a massive uh, segment where like four main streets kind of converge into one large marketplace. It's mm -hmm. not quite on the corner there, but it's just off the side, one of the main streets there, and it kind of faces outward. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a, a, a prominent establishment, mm -hmm. though it is a little sunken back from the main street. There's a little bit of like a tiny courtyard that's built there. It's not really well kept. <laughs> Is the Red Lamp District. Uh, not every proprietor is as um, exacting. You mean the Fun District? <laughs> oh. Yes, the Fun District. Why do you think I have my place there? I am interested in finding out uh, so many things. I'm interested in finding out exactly why she chose to be there. I mean, the Chamberwoman obviously has her own home. Well, hmm. True, but most likely she has a family. Yes. <laughs> yes, and yes. I'd like to, yeah. Uh, or I, maybe she's, she has a hard time finding anyone to be intimate with. Maybe she's very shy in, in her everyday life and she looks forward to finding someone who will let her be herself for a moment. I like you more and more the more you talk, you know that? <laughs> Who, who's typically in charge of establishments such as this? Uh, a, a, a madam or a... Well, uh, the, uh, would I know the owner of the getaway van? Uh, yes, you, you would actually know the owner. Uh, the owner, his name is uh, Simon Terrafon. It's not the same Simon that we spoke about last That's time. That's a different police officer. officer. Different Simon Terrafon? Simon Terrafon. And, uh, and this this is it does operate primarily as a hotel, publicly. Publicly. <laughs> oh. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, do I know him personally? Uh, you know of him. You may have had a passing conversation with him, but he kind of stays to his establishment, mm -hmm. occasionally wandering around. So you haven't had many. Many crossing of paths in the past, but like anybody who does a lot of business in this town, and you make it your business to know who does mm -hmm. business in that part of town, you know of him. Mm -hmm. right. We're we're walking there right now. Yes. yes. Right. All right. Yeah. So gather your things, uh, traverse back, but down into Red Lamp, which at this time of day, this early morning, which now it's kind of late morning, 10, 11 or so, you know, pushing noon in the next hour or so. Um, the majority of the street does not carry the same liveliness it does in the evening. Um, there are people sobering up. There are individuals who are just kind of traveling through, some that are emerging from some of the various places of business and hoping to not be noticed as they skitter off like insects when you turn the lights on, mm -hmm. um, trying to find their business around. Pardon the, pardon the squeaking of the device behind me. <laughs> um, but eventually, Following your trail, you head to the exterior of the Getaway Grand, the eight-story complex, a little bit recessed from the main street, and where you can see the, the red brick and the, the, the fine stone work that's kind of, it's built to look like it once held some esteem, uh, but it has definitely fallen to a bit of disrepair. There are uh, pockets of, of dirt and grime that have kind of built up through the rains that nobody's really had the time or funds to, to tend to, but nobody necessarily comes here for the grandiose presentation of the establishment. It's definitely not terrible, but it, it's not it's no varnish type establishment. Mm. Um, the little courtyard here has some bushes, some that are you know, uh, well kept. The grass here is mostly mud these days due to the weather, um, and uh, the little gate that kind of closes off the interior is open. Uh, the front double doors you see with fine brass pullers to open it up are there, but there is a peri uh, periphery officer kind of just standing at the door, just kind of looking around with a familiar uh, dark hat with the two points, almost the horseshoe shape of the front, mm. kind of stands there, arm in arm, glancing out. Do you think he'll let us in? Let's find out. Good day, officer. All right, good day. Huh? Yes, uh, I don't know if you know me, I'm a proprietress nearby of the sight unseen. I'm here to take a meeting with my colleagues and a 
a new potential business partner. Uh, may we pass? Uh, make a sway roll. This is low stakes. He's more just kind of gleaning your business. No. What'd you roll? Double ones. Ooh. Double ones. Whoa, Ooh. rough. It's, all right, uh, unfortunately, there's been a bit of a, an event the night before. Uh, if you come back in about an hour or two, we'll be done with our business and you can tend to it or find another uh, another venue out and about. But, what kind uh, of event? I, oh, uh, it's a periphery business. Oh. oh, well, uh, as our partner is probably already here, they've come in from out of town, uh, we'll return in an hour. May we, uh, may we send a missive? Uh, uh, reaches into his jacket and pulls out a small pad of paper and a little pencil. I can see what I can do. Yes, uh, would you, if the GM would let me, uh, <laughs> would you write a letter to the front desk for me and let uh, Matthew know that, <laughs> um, let Matthew know that uh, <laughs> Miss, what's my name? Uh, Charlotte. I just. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> every day. As soon as I realized, Matthew. Ah, great! I need Everything more Everything else just shot out of the head. As soon as I realized that. <laughs> um, right. It's very serious business. Uh, would you please uh, let Matthew know that uh, Ms. Eves came by uh, and had been uh, looking to. Uh, meet in uh, the regular room uh, with their colleague, and if he would uh, possibly stay put and keep ready, that we would be by in approximately one hour and 15 minutes. Okay, I'll do what I can. Mm. Mm, thank you. Now, go on your way. Uh, during this time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will try to see, because I'm sneaky. Yeah. I'm gonna try to just sneak on past. Just sneak past while they're having this conversation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and make a uh, make a hide. And because I have born in the shadows, yeah. when attempting to avoid security or detection, you gild an extra day. Ooh. You gild, you gild an extra hide day. That's my boy. So we got we got this one. We got this one. So how many? How much? So for hide, so it's two dice, but they're both gilded for you, unless you want to spend a drive. Oh, they're both gilded. Okay. So. Uh, I'm oh. I'm also a sneaky beeper, so I'm gonna give you some help because I'm gonna immediately I'm gonna figure I'm gonna clock that mm -hmm. you're about to make a sneak. Okay. So I'd like to just uh, help by doing a little distraction. So you I'll spend it. a drive okay. to give you an extra die. You got it. All right. So. Y'all, okay. we were rolling. Like, you guys are rolling. Dude, on the guild that I rolled a one and a two, and then on the other one I rolled a two. Well, you get your drive oh, back, no. right? Yep. Yeah, well, that's you good. Back. That's yeah. our that's our circle so, that, that's our circle ability. Yeah, we. Yeah. Get you go, you trauma, go ahead and, and and kind of intervene body. behind her to go ahead and get the attention. <clears throat> um, as you're doing so. <laughs> you fucking yes. trip on my shoelaces. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of stumble for a bit and hit her back in the shoulder, who knocks into him slightly, who pushes him back, and his arm goes out to catch himself, which also blocks your entry just as you're passing by, and as you bump into his arm, he goes, hey, 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 hey. Sorry, it's, 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 it's a tussle. I don't know what I need. I just want to come back in an hour. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Thank you, officer. Are you all right? I'm fine. Oh. All right. Um, I'm I'm walking away fast and shaking my head. I don't know what's. Charlie, is there another is, entrance? Uh, There's gotta be a service entrance or something. I'm, I'm I'm more frustrated about losing my losing my cool there. Did you Wait. forget your name for a moment? Yeah, I I I what have a lot on my mind. Uh, there should be another entrance, yes. uh, the service entrance, of course, and uh, well, there would be a fire escape of some kind. Yeah. There are, you do know, and you can see from, as you back away from the entryway, there are two alleys that run to the right and left of it, because it is buttressed against two other larger buildings, not quite as tall as the getaway, but definitely on each side, about three stories on one and five on the other, um, and there are buildings behind it as well. So you would assume, and you know this area pretty well just from darting through the alleys here, there are alleys that wind in the back of a lot of these mm. businesses as well. All right. So. I kind of know this area. Oh. I can kind of take us to the back and see if maybe there's another entrance. Wonderful. We're gonna like have to a sneak into entrance. the room anyway, so I don't see why sneaking into the premises would be any different. I agree, Doctor. Lead on for once. Yeah, let's go. All righty. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, following your lead, you kind of head around, turning left from exiting the front of the getaway. 
darting into another adjacent alley about two buildings down to make sure that you're both out of sight and also just finding a nice spot where you're not being noticed uh, as you kind of dart into one of the dark shaded gaps between this presentational street front. Uh, you go ahead and head backwards to the back alley. There's a bunch of garbage and refuse and empty boxes, and it definitely has a, a musty hard water meets old trash smell that just permeates the back of this, uh, this region. But as you curve to the left and begin to head further down, you see eventually the back of the getaway. Um, indeed, there is a fire escape that runs towards the back. Um, there are some piles of, of trash, and as the four of you approach, you see uh, one of the n numerous vagrants that wander back here is kind of like balled up near one of the trash bags, kind of sees you approach and kind of gets up and grabs his stuff and starts walking away. Um, but you are... Did Alexandra tell us what room it was? On the sixth floor. Sixth floor. Sixth floor, sixth floor that's, all, that's we all we know. That's all you know. It's the sixth floor. Mm. Okay. All that I should have asked. You look up the fire escape towards the sixth floor when you're making this notion, and you do see a window that is blown out. Oh. Like, there is a hole, like there, it is broken and shattered, and you can see now to the ground where you're standing, right beneath it, there are glass shards like all over the alleyway right here. There, uh, looking back up at it, you can see the actual brick is damaged. Mm. There are chunks of brick on the floor. It looks like, looks like something just bashed its way out of this. Chamber. The guy that just ran off. Mm -hmm. Hey, 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 hey! Uh, 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 hey, what's up? Uh, uh, were you here, were you here last night? Like in the morning? Were you here all night? Yeah, yeah, but you didn't see nothing. You didn't. No, no, see... no. Saw nothing. Saw what? It looks to you. It's gonna missing a few teeth. Uh, kind eyes. The gentleman looks like in his sixties or so, with kind of these uh, kind of tufts of hair on the side of his head that kind of come into these like, greasy points at the end. He's just wearing kind of uh, a couple layers of gathered clothing, and he grabbed a large uh, sack of some kind that he's kind of tucked under his arm. Yeah, uh, uh, what, why? Like, did you hear anything? Did you see anything weird? Yeah. Does he have any glass on him? <laughs> <laughs> he does not have any glass on him. Okay. Um, but he's seen kind of like holding something tightly under his arm. He's like, well... I mean, yeah, you see weird stuff around here all the time. You know what I'm talking about. I know we see weird shit, but like, I'm talking weird fucking shit. Kind of shifts from foot to foot for a second, thinking. Can I roll a read on him to see yes, like, you what may. he's trying to hide? Go ahead and make a read test for me. One oh, wait. One of us has to self actualize here. Yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I can't remember my name, so don't look to me. I'm gonna. Okay, okay. that's fine, but I, I rolled a four and make success yes. on the Gilded. Yes, okay. so. well, on the Gilded. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, watching him, he, he looks. He looks two layers of startled. One, he's definitely like trying to get out of sight with something under his arm. And two, he looks like he's. Rattled, he, mm. as he's, you're asking these questions, and he's kind of rattling off. His eyes are kind of off in the distance a bit, and he looks kind of, kind of scared. And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." No. What do you say you're gonna do? Mm. Okay. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I. Kind of looks up, and you can see a periphery officer steps out of the large hole, the window onto the fire escape, and he's just kind of now keeping an eye. On this area, as out of my happens. pocket, mm -hmm. I'm gonna pull out a wrap piece of bread and just little snacks, and, be, and just like look up at the officer. And, yeah, yes, yeah, so I have some food. I have some food. Looks up at the officer. Thank you so much. This is a kind gift. As he holds his hand out, did I see catch a glimpse of what he had under his arm? Uh, go ahead and make a uh, survey test for me. Just a oh, shit fucking search trap. Oh, I don't have. I'm gonna spend. Uh, do I want to? I'll oh, just low stakes. This is low stakes. Low stakes. All right. You're just, you're just glancing at him. <laughs> I got the. I failed because it's the lower. I rolled a two on the lower. <laughs> no glance at it. No, okay. no. No idea. He's kind of holding it close under his like layered jacket. He goes, "Thank you. I'll, I'll go eat this over here." Mm, kind of gives yeah, you yeah, a. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You follow him over. Um, Kind of underneath, so the officer is able to see both of you, and kind of in the overhang of what you now see is a back door that does seem to lead into the inside. Yes. So, um, 
it was a real, it was a real foggy night last night, and me and me and Skitty and Enon were just out here, you know. Yeah. We got ourselves a got ourselves a stash. He kind of like references the thing under his arm. We were just enjoying it, you know, just just having a night out. It's not much to do. Sometimes it's part of town, and then we just heard this heard this terrible noise, big crash, something like like something was breaking breaking all all the all the glass in the windows. The the, the metal was creaking and, and shit, and kind of spooked. And we all stood up and started to to scatter and thinking maybe we were, maybe they were upon us. Maybe some of the officers saw us and was going to try and bust us for for you know having stuff. And then. And then uh, I, I I saw something, something big, something real big, just just kind of move through the shadow. And uh, I think Skitty, Skitty got a good look at it. Um, he uh, and Enon we haven't seen since. I think I think whatever it was that got Enon. Was the oh. Ah! I've been only talking to you this whole time. <laughs> and you kind of approached her and I was like, what? Wait, I got nothing. It's I, fine. No, no, I don't. no, no, no. She, they, they, they're all with me. She's, 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 she's my woman. Oh, yes. Augie and I have been dating. We're quite betrothed. It's fine. It's fine. You can tell her anything you want. Well, you move on up. I says. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it's what fight. I do. Yes. Don't worry about it. The beast that you spoke of, he was flying or he was walking? Did it fall out of the window and land on the ground, or did it fly through the air to the next building over? <laughs> I, I don't know about no flying beast or anything, yeah, but whatever it, whatever it was, it was moving through the alley. It was on the ground. Okay. So walking then? Sure, yeah. When you say it got Enon, it got him as in took him? We haven't seen him since, I think. I think Skitty mentioned that he he saw Enon get pulled away when it ran through. Pulled away where? You have to ask Skitty. Where's Skitty? Uh, I mean, he's probably sober enough at the good grave eatery right about now. He's had a rougher morning than me. <laughs> I'm just trying to trying to think if it's still safe to call this place uh, our grounds. You know, after last night, stuff's getting weird these days. You may want to. Uh, uh, hello, how are you? Okay. You may want to find a, a new place to rest, at least for a few days, and especially until the the periphery are finished with their investigation. Oh, you're right. You're right. Hey, if you go to the Gilded Rainbow, I've got a bed back there. Maybe get a little hair of the dog, sleep it off, get get a good nice rest. Okay. Real kind. I appreciate that. Yeah. As for Reggie, say I'm I'm, I'm friends with uh, almost forgot my name too, Augie. <laughs> friends with Augie. You Augie? I'm Augie. Yeah. Augie. Hey. Terry. Hey, nice to meet you. Terry Bode. <laughs> yeah, Terry Bode. You know, I, I I feel like I know Skitty. I feel like I've met Skitty in the past. You, may, you, you probably have. He's he's pretty loud. That one. <laughs> Bit of a, well, I bit think of a I know what you're talking about. Once the pleasantries begin, I uh, Howard totally disengages, <laughs> and uh, I want to see if I want to just see if I can bop over to um, the the refuse on the ground, the glass, and uh, and and investigate pieces. I'm looking for if it's glass. I'm looking specifically mm -hmm. for bl bl yeah. blood or bits of some. Yeah, kind. yeah. Go ahead and make oh, a God. focus blood test for me if you don't mind. Focus. Uh, I'm gonna spend a drive on this one, and I got a gilded. <clears throat> So I get three. Okay, mixed success at four. Mixed success at four, okay. Um, while you're having this conversation and Terry's like, you know, I, I used to be a banker. You know, I, I was dressed up nice like these folks too. You know, and, and things just change so fast sometimes. And as this conversation's happening, you're kind of going through the... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how long are you? Yeah. A game and a half. <laughs> Hell yeah. Excellent. <laughs> As you you begin to uh, <clears throat> look amongst the broken glass and the chunks of fallen brick and masonry that have fallen free from whatever happened up above, uh, you kind of glance through and you don't see any 
blood mm. at, at all. Uh, but you you see a couple of, of, of odd things that, that, that don't look like they should be here. You see, they look like, almost like gray. You ever see what boiled bacon looks like? Oh, Ew. yeah, okay. It's awful. It's it's a it's like gray, somewhat slimy strips of some sort of flesh, Mm-mm. something Mm-mm. inhuman, something Mm-mm. that that looks uh, unnatural. Looks like it it was either carved off, sloughed off. Mm-mm. It's just kind of sitting there on the ground as you as you kind of look towards it, oh, yeah. and kind of you know at first it just kind of blends in with the rest of the the chaos that's fallen on the ground here, and you see it and recognize the texture as it kind of just glistens from a little bit of sunlight that's coming through as the last bit of the fog is burned off in the morning, you kind of look at it, and it twitches. It twitches, and you, you feel yourself like, what the fuck is that? And as you pull away for a brief second, you, you, you feel your kind of heart jump into your throat, and you do take a brain. Oh, no. Oh, do we have bleed containment vials? We do, we do indeed. Don't you have one? Yes, I do. Uh, um, do we see this happening? Uh, you're having this conversation. You do hear probably an audible gasp as you turn around and watch as Howard is like backing away a couple mm-hmm. steps. Would you, would you two excuse me? Continue, yeah, continue yeah, talking. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of flesh. Okay. What's that then? Are you all right, Howard? Oh, certainly, certainly. Professor, I'm doctor. Sure, uh, I have moments where uh, um, the new information makes me somewhat uncomfortable. Um, watching his gaze. Uh, 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 Point, point to what you're looking at. Oh, I think we can all see it. I'm gonna. Don't, 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 I'm gonna touch it. Don't do it. Okay. Don't touch it. Touch it. Touch it. Go ahead and grab it, and it does it like makes that horrible slimy sound. Yeah, yeah. It twitches twice in your grasp, uh, and then begins to climb your finger. No, oh, this was no, a mistake. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm get, getting the bleed containment vial and, and putting it right underneath it. You put it underneath it, and it's not coming free. And as you look, it's pushing into your skin. Oh, it's pushing my, into I, your hand. Oh, I, it's I a unique my, sensation. Pull out my jackknife and just start, without touching it, start to try to carve it off the finger part. Okay. Uh, You're cutting my finger right no, now? No, off the finger part, that's what I'm saying. I need, like, you, to make, some, I need you to make a control test right yes, now. Yes, you do. As this is now slowly, uh, almost like burrowing I'm gonna, its way I'm into I'm the I'm going to give you hand. a drive point okay? and from I'm my going nerve. to, because I'm cool under pressure, I'm assuming this is a high stakes roll. Uh, this would be relatively high. Yes, 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 okay. <laughs> um, um, I may always spend cunning instead of the drive the roll would normally use. So I am going to spend a cunning drive uh, instead of a nerve drive for control, so I will take another. All right. Okay. Okay. Three. Please don't be stupid. <gasps> three sixes! Oh, three! My goodness! I mean. Let's take a to Vegas. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken, dinner. You. Dinner, yeah. You. Manage to expertly pull your blade forth and carve it like snatch the front of where this this weird strip of flesh is and pull it from his hand, leaving no wound behind. It looked like it was burrowing in. But when you pull it away, there's no sign of burrowing. There's no pain and no bleed. Wow. Barely. <laughs> I'm you triple six. I, yeah. I feel like thank you, thank you. That will never happen again. But hey, as you grasp and contain it within your vial, and like you can kind of see it as you lock off the lid and glance at it, it's kind of like that's unpleasant. That was very interesting. Indeed, we should. Hey, what's going on down there? And you see the periphery officers now glancing over the top of the fire escape. Don't worry, officer. We're simply good Samaritans taking care of this young. Uh, Unhoused gentleman. Uh, we're trying to find him new home. Uh, trying to find him somewhere off the streets. Okay. We'll be on our way. What's going on? Is there is there a problem up there or something? Oh <laughs> Nothing you got to worry about. Get okay. moving on. All right. Then. Let's go and let's take the time. I didn't get some shit. He wouldn't have believed us. You know. It's true. 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 Uh, uh, let's uh, let's yeah, take Terry yeah, and, and leave here. Uh, and I'm just okay. going to keep Did an you eye more of those on him. Great twitchy, fleshy things around here. Well, certainly. On the ground, that would be bad if somebody else picked one up. Uh, 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 do we see the other one? Are there any yeah, more? And can it fit yeah, in? I'd, my... I'd say you, you, uh, there are two of them, and mm-hmm. you can you could probably get them both up now that you know what you're in for, and you mm-hmm, can desperately mm-hmm. you do gather it up. Um, you don't see anything else here beyond the the back door to the. Hotel, a couple of windows that are closed from the inside, and the alleyway that goes to the right and left with a couple of offshoots that lead to other. Wow. Should we try to get to the room now, or should we head to the good gravy? I, uh, 
I am certainly hungry after that experience. Uh, mm. Professor, huh? why did you pick it up with your fingers? Oh, well, I suppose it was an experiment of sorts. <laughs> with your own flesh. Well, that's the sum of the greatest uh, uh, scientists of all time have used themselves as their Howard. guinea pig. Yes? This may not be a time to worry about your reputation as a professor or aggrandizing yourself in terms of... You have to be more careful. Oh, well. Yeah, I thought you were the smart guy over here. Even I wouldn't have touched that fucking thing. What a it genius. It all worked out, though, didn't it? Huh? The variables were in place. Everyone played their part. Good gravy, I'm hungry. I'm just going to walk off to the good gravy. I'll I follow behind you. and talk to Howard. I understand the lure of such unknowns. But don't put yourself on the line if unnecessary. The payoff isn't worth it, trust me. <laughs> I thought I was the lecturer here. <laughs> Duly noted, thank you. Oh, duly noted. And I'll actually note it. <laughs> <laughs> A short shot later, uh, you come to the Good Gravy Eatery. Uh, the exterior of it, it's a, it's a small little cafe um, at this time of morning. Uh, it definitely seems to be a, a place of those who sober up here in the Red Lamp, uh, just a few blocks away. Um, as you step within the interior, you can smell like the freshly cooked uh, sausages and the smell of, of breakfast foods and meats and eggs just kind of wafting through the air. Uh, you can see a couple of business folk that themselves are kind of finishing their coffee and getting ready for the day, probably within the district or just beyond, as well as a number of uh, other folks that look like they've had a rougher night and they're still in the process of recovering. Um, it doesn't take too long for you to see a person uh, that you not recognize as Skitty. You see this uh, gentleman uh, in his early 50s, um, Red hair, like mostly receded, and the rest of it is just this kind of large, like bush of red hair, uh, almost like a, like a vibrant flame of a head. Um, very, very pale skin. Um, looks gaunt and shaken, and is currently by himself in one booth in the far corner, just clutching a mug uh, that is just steaming. Looks almost untouched as he's just kind of staring down at the table. Shall I come with you? I think that's him. Okay. Do we all go? I think after our experience with Terry, it might be best if uh, it's you. Right, all right. I don't want to frighten a poor man. Okay, I'll, I'll give him you... a hello and then I'll invite you guys over. Yes, and uh, why don't you order yourself a meal, Howard? Oh, sounds good. <sighs> bacon, bacon, bacon. Oh, get, get some, get some, get some bacon and some. Um, some coffee. Some coffee. All right, yeah, sounds good. And I'll go Wait, and sit on the me. counter and order a, a, a bite. You got it. Mm. Carlo, I think we might want to keep an eye on the good professor for a little bit, yeah? Of course. I'm going to stand in the middle of the room. Just uh -huh. in there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, feel free to order something, perhaps a, a coffee for you, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. <gasps> Pie. Mm. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, I'm going to walk over. Hey, uh, hey, oh, <laughs> Skitty, right? Yeah, that's, that's my name. Why, who are you? Uh, 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 Augie, I feel like I've seen you in passing. Don't worry about no, it. I, Do you mind I, if you I look take familiar. a seat? I know, I, what? Do huh? you mind if I take a seat? Yes, okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> what you drinking? Oh. It's coffee. I haven't really started drinking it yet. I'm gonna get to it and just, it's probably. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Mm. Um, uh. let's get you. Off. Hey, uh, uh, can we, can we get two uh, two fresh cup of coffees, please? Get your sip. Sure, get you some coffee. Hang on. And uh, hey. and uh, maybe some pancakes. Pancakes and coffees coming up. Maybe some uh, some uh, some some bacon and and eggs and. Bacon, eggs, pancakes, coffee coming right up. Yeah. Um, I'm off, and Skitty just kind of watched them. Ah, uh, thank you for that. Uh, it's gonna be tasty. <laughs> uh, so hey, I was just uh, I ran into Terry. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And talked to him. Yeah, we was talking, and uh, he said 
You guys kind of had a rough night. Yeah, 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 we did. It was so, so, so fucking crazy. You <laughs> told us that you... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, there's a full-on honking, like, nose evacuation into whatever scarf you just handed him. You can keep that. Um, I will. So, what, 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 you, did you see something? You saw something, Yeah, right? I, yeah, I, well, we saw something. I, uh, we were, my, I, I don't know what to tell you. I was, we were all kind of fucked up at the time, you know? Sure. Um. But like we were, we were just laughing it off, having a night of jokes and everything. And then like we heard a crash, and we all kind of went for cover. And then, then something heavy hit, hit the ground behind us like a big boom. And then we heard a scream, and we turned, and then something big moved through. It was wrapped in torn cloth and grime. I didn't, it was, it looked like it was just awful nightmare of a thing. It had, had so many arms, like, I can't, I, I was really fucked up. I think I may have misremembered it, but well, just it fucking him. grabbed me on and took off with him. And I don't know where he is, and I don't know if he's safe. All right. Me and my friends were, were gonna try to find him. Oh. Do, do, you, do you mind if I invite them over to sit down? Or do you need some space? Who are your friends? Well, we got over there, the pretty one in the purple. Okay, yeah. We got that dummy over there. He's a doctor. He's eating whatever he's eating. And that's Charlie. You probably, you probably heard about Charlie around. She's kind of like, She's family. Okay, yeah. Coffee arrives, pancakes arrive. Immediately just goes into scarfing. Just just automatically going into survival mode and just <laughs> So this is this is Skitty. My friend Skitty, he's he's been telling me about his night and everything that he saw, and I told him that we were gonna try to help him look for for Enon. Yes. Is there anything you can tell us about your friend Enon? Yeah, he, he's he's kind of been under my wing for a couple years now. He's about 30 or so. Uh, long, scraggly blonde hair, a bit of a beard. He tries to keep it pointy. It's only when he wakes up, it's all crazy, usually. He's a nice fella. Been a musician. Uh, keeps his guitar with him. Um, or he did. And he kind of points to the back of the, uh, the booth they're in, and you can see there's a partially damaged guitar that's kind of set up on the back of the booth. He left it behind when he got taken, so I'm holding on to it for when he comes back. Was he playing it when the creature arrived? Not, not at the moment. We were just telling jokies. And I don't remember a whole lot. I'm real sorry. I was real fucked up. Did you... Not to, you know, a man of your age. Did, did you did you all fight in the war together? I mean, me and me and Enon did, but Tara was too old, you know. I got. Now it wasn't a good time. Once it was over, they just kind of stopped helping us and set us on our ways. And yeah, they seem to be pretty good at that, huh? It's hard to come back, you know, and, and when you've seen some of the things that we have and you're just told to move on like nothing's changed, come back and the city's all bright and shiny and people don't remember who you were or what you've done. And, And you notice this point, he like keeps like scratching the side of his forearm, and you kind of glance into the sleeve, and you can see there's like a 
like a gash that's starting to darken a little bit. Skitty, uh, what happened to your arm? Uh, I scraped it on last night at some point. I don't know what happened. Mm. Uh, doctor? Yes? Uh, might you have any salves or something that would work on something? Like a gray, wormy flesh thing that's embedded itself in someone's arm? Seems unlikely that I would have that specific medication. <laughs> uh, also, PhD, not MD. Uh, may I take a look at your arm, please? You're the doctor, right? I said, is the doctor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's the doctor. Uh, I'd like to examine the arm and see if there are any. Uh, there, there's any movement within his arm mm. <laughs> that is not the muscles of his arm. Sure. Go ahead and make a focus test for me. All right. I should be good at it. Hopefully. Yeah. Hey, uh, that's a five on the gilded. Nice. Yay. Great, great. Um, <clears throat> inspecting it, it looks like it's a, a rapid gash, like somebody who just like ran into something sharp, like a corner or an edge, and just kind of like tore across. Um, and it just it looks like it's it's likely on a path to infection. It's not treated sometime soon. Mm. Um, but none of the flesh looks like it's out of the ordinary, thankfully. Oh, okay. <clears throat> oh well. This seems like a relatively ordinary type of. Are you uh, winking because it? You mean it's not ordinary? No, because. Or are it, you winking it, because it is? It is because it is. It is ordinary. Oh, great. It is, but I, uh, ordinary. Why would it not be anything other than ordinary? Of course. Of it's course. An ordinary. It is very ordinary. Uh, but I would suggest that uh, perhaps if there's a shelter, you could go to on the Shrive Line, uh, a, a doctor, a nurse. You might want to have that looked at. Okay. Perhaps I can, I can do that. And when I say might want to, uh, you must or you'll die of sepsis oh, within goodness. a few uh, days. Do, do, okay. Uh, uh, Skitty. I'll, 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 yeah, okay. I'll, I'll go ahead and make sure that they get taken a look at. Thank you, doctor. If you need any help finding someone after you finish your meal, go ahead and stop by the site unseen. Uh, the gentleman there, uh, Stinson, uh, tell him that Charlie sent you and you need a doctor. Okay, I can do that. Mm. Uh, speaking of uh, shelters and, and hostiles, what was, uh, pardon me, I'm, uh, Usually not very good with the interview portions, but uh, is there a place where Enon would go when uh, he needed a, a night away from the cold? I, I, I shan't assume that you're all without home. Uh, is there a place where he would frequent? I mean, m most of us just kind of gathered outside of the, the the getaway. We we there's a back storeroom that they usually don't pay attention to that we just kind of go in and nap at night. Mm. That, that's usually where we go. So you can't think of anywhere he might be since his disappearance? No, I mean, we all hop between the different different hostels if need be and get ourselves some soup or a meal and meet up friends if need now and then, so, but not, not particularly like one place or anything. I have a lot of questions. Mm. Which side of the alley was he pulled from? If you're uh, standing in front of the hotel in the alley, did he go to the left or the right? Uh, that would be on, on the right-hand the right -hand side, would be where it, it moved so fast, and so I reached out, try and grab him, and he was just gone. Did you see his body being pulled away, or did it seem like suddenly he was part of the creature? No, I just saw him yelling and being pulled away. When we say creature, we mean most likely a, a creature escaped from the local zoo. I'm sure it was some sort of. It's kind of what I figured. Yeah. Like a bear or something. Yes, yeah, so ba a bear. It was a, about a bear size. A large, scary bear. Yeah. With a lot of arms. Yes. The Scarlet does that. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta get off this stuff. <laughs> And just like stuffs a big old chunk of bacon and pancake in one fistful into his mouth and chews. Seeing that, just uh, and as he says that, just uh, you know, you, Charlotte's face falls a little bit, thinking uh, thinking about the ramifications of some of the dealings that she has been making in this town. Well, less. Uh... We have some more time we'd like to spend with Skitty here. I'm, my belly is full. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps we should return 
uh, it should certainly be an hour and a half at this yes, point, correct? Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> All right. Sure. Skid, you do stop by the site unseen, yes? Yeah, I, w- I will. I will. I'll talk to Stimson. Stinson. Stinson. Yes. Tell him the Charlie, right? Was what you saying your name was? All right, yeah, I'll tell him. Right. I'm going to take out some coins, put them on the table. It's very, very kind of you, Uggie. Very kind. Hey, I remember what you did. I know that was a hard time. Thank you for fighting for us and... We care about you. Appreciate that. Anybody else I, gonna finish this? Um, oh, I thought... No, it's all yours. Uh, coin as well. Uh, oh, okay. So it's like filling his pockets <laughs> with the stuff he hasn't eaten. Uh, take care, Skitty. Shall we? What? Yeah. All right. Where are you off to now? I think we should find that storeroom. <coughs> yeah, go to the storeroom and try to uh, mm-hmm. get up. It might be worth, and I hate to do this every time, not every time, but I hate every time that I have to do this. It <coughs> might be worth me continuing the ruse uh, to see if uh, I can distract from the front. If you'd like another date, you're more than welcome to try. Mm-hmm. But I believe he said we could just come in in an, in an hour and a half, did he not? Ah, uh, yes, that's true. We could just, we try, could just, just like try and walk right in. in. But if you fancy no, him, no, no, no. I would be uh, delighted to be. What's the term? Well, a wingman. I'll be your oh. man. I'll be the man on your wing if you. Prefer. Let's go. All right. <laughs> All right. So you return to the getaway grand. Mm. Yes. Okay. As you approach the familiar exterior, uh, street-facing side of the building complex, uh, the door is no longer guarded by that periphery gentleman. Perfect. Shall we? Uh, open the door. Send the steps and enter the main entry, pushing the doors aside. And it is, you know, it's a relatively nice hotel interior. You can see there's uh, some gold painted detailing across the uh, kind of dark, almost like purple black wallpaper that hits the entryway on both sides with some archways, all showing a little bit of age, but still a little bit of, you know, low end decadence. Um, the carpeted floors, the carpet itself is a little bit of a stain texture too, but it also gives it some character. Uh, you step in a little bit, passing a few offices on each side, doors closed. There is a, uh, a bellman's desk and a number of cubbies, as well as looks like a key hanging arrangement wall behind. Uh, and there is uh, a, a middle aged clerk uh, gentleman who is currently kind of sitting there, pair of glasses, uh, short hair on the sides, smooth bald head, a um, bit of an ascot and a jacket, who you can see is the, the current. Uh, Deskman for the establishment is in the process of just writing within. Kind of looks up and just kind of gives you both a look, and then goes back to his business. So it doesn't. I don't recognize him as Matthew. Then, uh, <laughs> just checking. Uh, perhaps one of the bellmen. Um, yeah. Let's just go to the elevator and see if we can just go straight. That's a great idea. Shall we? Just go, up. Just go straight to the elevator. Mm-hmm. Okay, in the elevator, the cart. Uh, and as it arrives, you can see the the great kind of. <laughs> Squeaks as it pulls open, the latticework pushed on one side, and there is this. I can only describe him as just a lump of a man. Uh, about four foot six. Uh, his shoulders and his older age have kind of just merged the back of his neck, and he wears this coat that, that almost frames him in the back collar with how far forward his head is. And he wears a little, like, this little square bellman's cap on top, kind of has this droopy dog sort of expression to his face as he sits there and says, Enter. Mm. How big is the elevator? Oh, uh, it can fit the four of you and him very uncomfortably. Excellent. <laughs> so you all kind of like <laughs> push yes. in. You all kind of squeeze in. You kind of like it's pushed against the wall and goes. <laughs> <laughs> begins to rise up. You can see the floors begin to. <laughs> until eventually he takes you at your request to the sixth floor before it opens once more, and you step out into the main hall of the sixth floor of the getaway. Uh, the smell here is pretty consistent. It has it has like aged perfume that has just long set into the interior, mixed with that never able to get out smell of ancient water damage. Mm. Um, you can see there are paintings <laughs> on the walls, there is 
uh, a window that faces out towards the street. Uh, there are small tables with uh, small vases and plants that probably haven't been kept that well and are starting to brown. Um, but you can see to the right and left of you, the hall continues both directions and there are doors uh, all across the hallway. And we don't see anyone from the periphery in either direction. On the left side, you do see towards the end of the hall a periphery officer who is currently kind of sitting in the corner on the outside of a room, the door partially ajar to a, a somewhat lit interior, and it's just kind of looking out. Hasn't quite uh, marked any of you yet, but you can see it's just kind of like sitting in space, the same periphery cap on, just kind of looking to the side. It's not the same gentleman that was downstairs from before, is it? It is not the same gentleman. That's good. Is it Matthew? No, I'm sorry. Damn, I'm sorry to Matthew. I'd like, to, I'd like to meet Matthew, please. Um, <laughs> I'm here for Matthew. Have you met him? Um, <laughs> right, well, here we find ourselves yeah. again. Okay. We've got a. Is he sitting at the end of the hallway? Like, how is he blocking the door? He's not necessarily blocking the door, but if you go down the hall, you see it kind of spreads out into another, like, like T separation where other rooms are. Uh, there is a door. That's partially blocked by the left-hand turn. You can just see part of it open before it goes away, and he's kind of uh, to the right of it, visible to you because he's almost in the middle of the T intersection uh, before both ways it goes. Just kind of standing next to where the door is partially open, um, and it's just kind of looking down at the ground. Hasn't noticed your arrival yet. Your arrival yet, or seems to care at the moment. Interesting. One way in. <laughs> um, I'll try something this time. Oh. Yes. Um, I'll walk just down the hallway and try to walk, try to walk past him to where like his view would be turned away from the door. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, mm -hmm. I'll keep walking down the hallway and then I'll just go, oh, and I'll fall to the ground. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> like you got the vapors. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Vapors. Sure enough. Um, yeah, go ahead and make us make a low stakes sway roll on this. <laughs> this is just to to sell just how deeply he he believes and rushes to you. Right? <laughs> Six. Ah. Six. That's you. Yeah. On the ground. Oh, oh dear. Um, um, miss, miss, you're right, miss, miss, you're right. Go, 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 go. Oh, out comes over and kind of looks at you and starts miss. Like lightly taps you on the cheek. Oh, uh, oh dear, oh dear. Hold on, I've got something for this. Ah, uh, so it's going through his pouches uh, while the rest of you kind of dart by and head into the room. Yeah. Yes, oh yeah. yeah. Three of you different in the room. It's like, it's like, oh, I, I got one here, and he pulls out a small capsule and kind of like opens it under your oh. nose. <laughs> oh, 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 it worked. Oh, I've always wanted to use one of those. Are you all right, Miss? I saw you just took a mean spill there. You all right? What happened? You look up and see this this round-faced kind of pe uh, young potato of a man, oh, um, uh, brown hair poking from beneath his cap. He looks like he's he's a younger officer. Um, who's probably just put on on watch duty for this and is kind of looking at you, a bit taken aback by. Uh, by your beauty, uh, this proximity is. Oh, um, you're feeling all right. Do, do we need to get help? Oh, my hero, what happened? Well, you just walked like boy and just passed out here on the floor, and uh, I just I hope everything's all right. Are you feeling well, ma'am? Oh, I, I should be. Do you have any water? Oh, uh, I, 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 not on me, but I can get you some water. I would love some. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. I'll come get you some water, and he okay. puts his arm out. Oh, thank you. I actually, if you don't mind, I'll. I'll stay on the ground. I feel a little unstable. Right. Oh no. Of course. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh. My. Maybe the kitchens. Right. Kitchens. Right. Um. Uh, <clears throat> and you hear him like do, 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 down the hall, and his footsteps poof, poof, down the stairs. He's taking the stairs. Oh. Get up and run <laughs> into the room. All right. Well, well the three of you brilliant. rush into the room. The first thing you see as you enter is the the light uh, that is filtering from the, the interior is pretty dark, aside from like the. The, the small oil lanterns that kind of line the walls that are kind of like low set to both for, uh, for you know, good fuel usage, um, but also to kind of give just the warm interior here, even in the middle of the day, though there isn't a lot of windows along the halls except for the one that you saw when you came in. This room, same vibe, but because the wall is smashed uh, in that opening, uh, quite a bit of light is coming through. And the first thing you see is this room is in complete disarray. The furniture is destroyed. There's an armoire that is just broken in half. There's a desk that is shattered. The, the bed itself is torn apart, bed sheets shredded. Um, it looks like there was a fucking fight here. There was a scuffle. Uh, and the window is blown out. Um, it is like a violent scene. But no blood. Mm. No blood. Oh, no blood. Um, the second thing you see is uh, a man about 
six uh -oh. foot one, uh -oh. uh, who is standing on the threshold of the bathroom of this room, uh, himself dressed in periphery uniform, hat off, uh, with what looks to be uh, a, a captain's uh, oh. <laughs> badge on his shoulder that turns and goes, excuse me, may I ask uh, who this is and uh, what, what, what the meaning of this is? This is a crime scene. Oh, uh, officer. Oh. Yes. Hello. Uh, I didn't know that they had actually sent you here already. Uh, you must know me already. Um, Charlotte. I've... Charlotte Eves. No idea who you are. Right. I'm sorry, miss. Hold on just a second. And you see I'm referring to in the bathroom, there is a woman who is sitting uh, on like the edge of the other toilet, not using it. Uh, <laughs> she's just taking a, <laughs> a huge <laughs> dip. I mean, uh, when is Boys it going? Oh, our first Victorian shit. <laughs> Um, you see a young woman, like her, her uh, late 20s or so, uh, mousy brown hair that's uh, done in a single braid down the back. She's wearing a, a, a green flower dress with a shawl over it. She's holding an umbrella in one hand, and she looks like she's a bit frazzled as well and is a bit confused by everyone kind of looking around. But nevertheless, the, uh, uh, the officer looks back to the rest of you. I, I have no idea who you are, but I would like to know uh, why you're in the middle of this scene, and uh, do you have any connection to Miss Onet? I'm gonna turn to the group and very, how far away is he? Uh, like at this a, point, like, like five feet from you. Okay. Like, like you burst into the room, saw the room, and then turn, and he's like right there going. I'm gonna turn to the group. Have I, I haven't entered yet. Oh, no, you're not there I, yet. No, because I'm not still in the hallway. Are either of you two averse? <gasps> yes or no? No, not at all. Okay. I am going to uh, reach into my pocket uh -huh. uh, where I carry my hand weapon, uh, which is just a, a set of brass knuckles in my pocket. Okay. And I'm gonna put them in my pocket as I re as I reach out to shake his hand. Oh God! Oh, he's mm. hello, Professor Howard Margrove. Mm. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm Chief Terran Rokes of the Periphery. Okay. Excellent. No, 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 no. And no, I am no, going. I am going to pull do my hand out of no. my pocket, no. and I'm gonna try to pull one right between his eyes. No. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, I need you to go ahead and make a strike test for me. Sure. This is. I'm gonna spend a drive. This is a high stakes roll. <laughs> this is a pretty spend. high stakes roll. You're you're uh, you're punching a chief uh, for the bravery. No. All right. Well, well, <laughs> I saw this coming. I saw this coming. Oh, that's right. So you, right. Just right. Saw, you, saw you saw this coming. You saw him reaching his pocket. You looking over at me and you were saying you were gonna do something. So I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna you get an extra drive. <gasps> Thank you. Oh, I Howard. hope this goes well. Oh, Howard. You're gonna oh, Howard. What? You know you have an extra... I, I already used one. No, no, no. <gasps> and Ooh, I've got yeah. my training done. Yeah. I just oh, spit a lot. That's all good? Yeah. All right, now if we fail this <laughs> five <laughs> dice roll, <laughs> we deserve it. Yeah. Yes, well, you, you do. I definitely deserve it. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, uh, that is uh, two sixes. Two sixes, Woo! all right. So two sixes, I'm gonna consider that as a critical success, which means you get a little little fun on top there. Um, I'm almost crying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> Tell me I walk in right as The other hand's still behind his back, and there's this moment of, he kind of looks at you with a curious glance, aware of the, the strange <laughs> change in demeanor as you lift it from your pocket, he begins <laughs> Slowly. And the Slowly. punch, yeah. punch is like the this. punch isn't like an Indiana Jones punch. He just kind of goes, boink, and <laughs> right between the eyes. <laughs> yep. It's just like a straight jab. Yeah, and yeah. and and, like and if you've never heard a person punched straight square in the oh. face and the nose, it isn't like the isn't like the fun video game movie. It's like it, it's a horrible no. honking sound as he just like his eyes cross a bit. You can see a little blood trickle from the nose, oh. and he just. Full on flat board what? onto the wooden ground of the inside, oh, right as you walk shit. in. <laughs> what happened? Hello, Arlo. Howard went rogue. Uh, uh, Mad respect. I'm, this one's got a pair on the, it. The, the, the young lady on the. The young lady. <laughs> young lady who's now standing holding the. the another one. Oh, 
Oh it's my God! Right. It's all right, darling. <laughs> it's it's all right. You're all right. Oh, he'll be he'll be fine. He'll have a quite the headache and maybe a stitch or two. Who are you? What are you doing? No, no, no. It's, oh, sorry. It's fine. It's fine, darling. We're friends. We're friends. We're friends. <laughs> yes, yes. Just go. Just go. Go, go, go. I'm just. Gonna... <laughs> his nose. His nose is definitely bleeding. <laughs> As you let it space running, um, this chamber has quite a lot of bleed residue oh, all throughout. Mm. A lot of the broken furniture. The exit uh, of the door entryway. There, there's no like thick, uh, like like soupy amount of concentrated bleed, but there is just visible bits of residue. So there is definitely, uh, definitely some sort of of magic and corruption has been afoot. Okay. Uh, Does it look like any of the bed linens are missing, or the curtains are missing, or anything? It looks like uh, the, they're not missing, but they're definitely torn apart. Okay. The bedlands themselves have been shredded. Okay. Was having uh, a good time in here. Uh, uh, can I s search for anything that seems any kind of, I mean, I don't even know what I'm looking for, but something that looks like it's out of place in a disheveled place, like something specific that looks like it's been either placed or something that is just out of the ordinary given the class. That Go ahead and make a uh, survey Excellent. test. Okay. <laughs> Six. Damn. Nice. Oh, yes. It's turned yes. around for us. I don't <laughs> say it. Not on <laughs> that anymore. Thank you, Robbie. You notice two things. <laughs> One, this is a crime scene that's already been pretty heavily picked over by the periphery. Mm. Unfortunately, that time period, that hour that took, gave them enough time to pretty much clear up anything that may have been of importance in this crime scene. Um, the other thing you, the only thing you do note is. Um, there is one piece of fallen jewelry uh, underneath the yes. broken armoire, which looks like a simple gold chain. Uh, can you use your, just on this, before I take it? You should is take it, it. Is it, is, is there anything on the uh, chain? No bleed on the chain. Okay, good. But you do, yeah, but you do. Want to get I'm going to grab the chain uh, and pocket it um, and turn back to this young lady. <clears throat> young lady, uh, uh, do you work here? No, I don't work here. I'm, I'm... Who are you? We're here to help. Make a sway roll. <laughs> um, I will, well, yeah, I can't help you. You just punched the police. No, 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 I should have said that. I should have done it. Should have been me. Should have been me. I don't know why you all. You got this way. I don't know why I don't know why it's okay. It's okay. Well, to be fair, you are you are all currently trying to get attention. If you would like to make it. I would very much like to make a sway I'll give you a drive, it's just so it makes sense. I'll give you a There you go, I respect that. I love that, so then I'll take another. A mixed success at four. Got Three, it. Three fours. Four. Interesting. <clears throat> Great. Oh, and also, I'll take the gilded die and get back my drive. Great. Da, 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 da. Do I get back my drive too? Not unless I failed. Okay. Yeah, she succeeded. So. Okay. Unfortunately. Not. Sorry. <laughs> um, look, looking out. Good. <laughs> Okay. Good looking out for yourself. Good looking out for yourself. Good looking out for yourself. You're the best friend you could have. Laura, I've been gaming with you for a decade now. I, I can only I only expect the negotiation every time. Well, if we fail, we get our points back. Okay. I love it. I, I genuinely love it. Um, she kind of like calms down slightly. Um, um my name's Kara, Kara Bellman. I'm um, I'm Chamberwoman Annette's assistant. Mm. Oh. And I was brought here a short time ago by the chief for questioning about what might have happened here, and I don't, I don't know what would have done this. This is, this is insanity. Was she? Was she was with someone? Yeah. You can see, like, there's this immediate, like, internal tension in her head. This, like, moment of her going, like. Kara. If there was someone here who could see what had happened. I, I, there was someone here with her. I, it was some. Damn it, so the chamberwoman had a bit of a, a bit of a paramour. Mm. His name was Waylon Freed. Waylon Freed? Freed. Freed. He was, he was a horn player who, I bet he was. 
Uh, bad, doctor, bad timing. Doctor, stop. Bad timing. I'm sorry. Was it? I mean, I was, <laughs> I was, I was ready to say it too. We worked in the varnish mostly, and they've had a few dalliances here and the, the getaway. I was responsible for just making sure it stayed here. And uh, I, I, that's all I know. Uh, you were making sure he was staying here? Is it, is it no, I was making it sure was... That, that nobody outs from oh, 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 about okay. to... We're not going to say anything. Yeah, don't worry, discretion, we understand discretion is key. Well, it's not anymore. Periphery, no. Oh, about oh. him? I. Right. They've been looking for him, and he can't be found either. Oh, all of them fine. This is good. It may sound like a strange question. Uh, it is a strange question. But uh, in addition to obvious comforts that perhaps her paramour provided, uh, did he ever play her music? I mean, it's kind of hard to romantically play someone a horn in no, no, a no, private no, no, hotel no, no, room, no, no. if that's I, what I you mean. I just mean, but... uh, sexual, there's another musician. There's sexual another. Sexual intercourse. There is another. Sexual intercourse. There is another musician, if you will remember. Yes. And I'm wondering if that might be uh, related. Because uh, yeah. <gasps> Enoch played too. Yeah. Thank you. It's not so strange, is it? No. I see the connection. Oh, you were being <clears throat> literal. I, believe there's I a... was being literal. Oh. Yes, there are a couple literal. concerts were... coming in town. <gasps> That's right. That's right. That's right. Maybe we should check that out. That's clever. Karen, do you need anything from us? Any help? Any. I, not particularly. I, what I do ask, though, is what, whatever you're doing, just don't don't tell her husband that I knew. Of course not. Well, who, who's her husband again? <sighs> just so we know not to tell her? Her husband is Aaron. Aaron Ferris. He's probably at their estate. Do they have children? No children, just their home in Briar Green. Oh. oh. I'm sure he's not happy about all this, because uh, I'm sure the periphery have told him. Oh. So just don't tell him that I knew. Yes. We should go. We should There's go. There's another police What's officer coming. That's right. Okay. No, no, go ahead. Uh, Kara, we'll happily keep your secret for you if there's anything you might be able to do when this Captain comes too. Oh, I did. To help cover our tracks. Well, I. What am I supposed. Well, uh, I've already kept too many secrets. I'm not going to. All right, it's you, fine. You it's punched fine. an officer in front of me. I don't even know you really. He won't remember much for about an hour before we got here, if I had to guess. Mm. Not that I've done anything like this before. Uh, what does uh, Aaron Affairs well, I, do for business? Just one more I, tiny I little question. Let's just you know them? All right. I mean, mm. He used to be a writer, but he's just mainly a house husband these days. Mm. Look, I got. I, I don't want to be here anymore. She kind of pushes past and, yeah, one, and like, steps over the... One more question. No, no I, I can't answer many more questions. Yeah, this has already right. put me in a... Right. A bad place. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, I've got to go. go. And she leaves the door right as uh, Officer kind of steps out of the way with a glass of water. And I'm going to grab her arm. <laughs> I'm going to grab her arm immediately and go, darling, did you? I'm sorry that we brought you in obviously a terrible place to rest. Uh, can we guide you perhaps to right, right. your room? Uh, you, what? Oh. What? Thank I know you. we fell over. I'm going to just kind of like act like I'm waking him up. <laughs> Like yeah, just yeah, patting yeah, him, but yeah, I'm yeah. also want to take his what, badge. What happened? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> lift it. Go ahead and make a hide <laughs> test for me. Oh, right, I get an extra guilt. Okay. Say hide or control. Those would be the, the two you get picked from. Okay, I'm gonna do hide quiz because I get an extra guilt. Okay. And then that's gilded. So I do. Oh wait, so it's two. Two gilded. Two gilded. Do you need a drive? Are you good? I'll, I'll, I'll let me, give let me, you. You know what? I'll do a drive. I'll do a okay, drive, and I'll give you. A drive. I mean, if they're both gilded, okay. you get it back regardless of what you roll. Yeah. So. Mm. And I'm going to give oh. you a drive. Oh. Okay. Let's but you still that. need the extra yeah, dice, yeah, yeah. don't you? No, don't. All right. Never mind. The only dice you can pick from are okay. gilded, yeah. so you get and it back regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Five. All right. Roll a five and a two. Get your, Wait. Get your drive back. Oh, sorry. Go, okay. 
Okay, so indeed, you swipe the badge and pocket it. As he's like, I, oh, what, 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 what happened around here? I, did he just fall over? He slipped and fell. I need no. you. No, it's the one I'm worse at. No. Why did you drop? No. I need you to roll, to roll sway for me right oh, now. Oh, roll sway no. for me. Sway. Oh, I've got. Well, got. I've got one in sway. Okay, that's just one. Nice. one. I've done a few lectures. <laughs> and I'm gonna spend a drive to give myself right. two. You got it. And I'm gonna spend a drive to give himself one as well. So three. This three. is four. He slipped. Yeah, one more and dice. Wait. One more. Oh, give me help. Yeah, I did. Thank you. I did. Yep. Burn those drives, y'all. Hey, I got six. <gasps> no, you got a six. He goes. Right. Excellent. Excellent. He goes. Oh, oh, oh goodness! I need to make sure he's all right. <laughs> and there's like patting him too. Mm-hmm. You seem like starting to come to oh, a little I'm, bit. I'm gonna take the water and get her down to safety. Sure. I'll take her sip and then I'll get you back. Be careful, because he was talking about some nonsense about people coming in. Oh, that's right. Let's get out of here. Let's get out. Blasts it right into his face. Just get out. Get out. Get out. Speedy McDeep. You rapidly exit. Uh, do you take the elevator or the stairs? Stairs. 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 And rapidly exit the getaway grand back into the street of Redland. Oh, no. oh Howard. <laughs> right. So should we go to the storage room while we're here? We should definitely get farther away from here than than we are right now. How well do Candela lighthouse keepers cover up things like punching periphery officers? Uh, it's a good question. I've never experienced that before. Oh, oh yeah, you guys are. Uh, I suspect above the periphery or like samezies. It's not exactly yeah. a hierarchy. They don't really know. Or we, about as you are exiting away. the getaway we grand. Left. It's We've left. In the We've left. Of a hotel as you are, <laughs> as you are exiting the getaway grand, Uh-oh. as you head out into the street, you see three figures approaching the getaway grand. And they're kind of navy blue long oh, coats. Uh-huh. Um, a few field officers of the OUP, one of which is a familiar, thin, gaunt fellow with short dark hair, about six and a half feet tall, kind of a, a rail of a man who looks <clears throat> past and eyes you, Augie, as you both pass each other. You remember this gentleman from a few weeks back as the first that interrogated you when you came to consciousness in Donald's place. Doesn't stop, but just. I'm gonna try to just like not make eyes at him. Well, you see him as, as soon as you make as soon as you first notice he's there. He's already looking at you, Fuck. and then you just continue moving, and he keeps moving, and you both pass as he heads toward the hotel. Um, Nevertheless, what do you want to do? That was uh, the guy. That was the guy. That was the one. That when I woke up, he was there. He's the bad guy. He's yeah. one of the bad guys. Would this be someone that we would have encountered in 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 Candela, uh, like uh, this? Or some of you may have encountered uh, Officer Aaron Weimer. Weimer. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, he's he's ahead of a number of investigations of the OUP, and as is takes his job very seriously, and is often considered one of the biggest thorns in the side of Candela's work. Oh, nightmare! Well, it's not good if he clocked any one of us. Uh. I feel like I, I feel like we made eyes at each other, not in a good way, but like it was just like a quick. You know, no. I was like, shit. He seemed to be staring at you the entire time, actually. He did. Oh shit. Yeah. All right. All right. Whatever we do, then we should go fast. Should we uh, to the storeroom? Storage. Or room. you mentioned that you knew the storage room in the back, or we should get out of here. I don't think the creature stopped into the storeroom, but we can always look. Oh, did you? You mentioned uh, you knew the Pharisees. Oh yes, they they live in the Briar Greens. My family knows most families. Oh. Ah, uh, do you know anything about Mr. Ferris? I know he used to be a writer, but he mostly stays at home now. Mm. Some sort of house, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and I know that yeah. Oh, Ned Ferris is a chamberwoman for the periphery. What, what if it's just as well with you, I'd, mm-hmm. I personally would prefer privacy, to I mean, leave this area. Yes, in general. Yes, 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 yes. Let's, let's walk and talk. talk. Wait, aren't we walking and talking? I thought that's what we were. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I assume you were, but where are you heading to? Where are you walking? Um, go, go. That's a good question. We could either go to their house, yeah. we could go um, try to follow the trail of whatever creature pulled, yeah. pulled Enom down the street, mm-hmm. 
We could go looking for Wayland. We could go looking for Wayland. We could look for where Wayland performed. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the music side of these things because Me the fact too. that, that it's, I, I'm sorry, but the fact that there's a guitar, there's a horn player, I feel like there's some, some kind of not. connection. Did he, did, does that name sound familiar to you at all? Did he ever play? Because it's, he played a lot in the varnish. That's what, that's what she said. I know so, there's a couple concerts coming up. Musicians have been coming in town. Uh, could we could we grab a paper to find like is there an entertainment section? You need a paper. paper. I got papers, of course you need. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've only I had a paper boy here. Oh, wonderful. Um, can we flip through and yeah. get information about uh, about who? There, yeah, uh, sure. Go ahead and make a uh, make a focus test for don't me. Don't make me roll for it. Well, this is going to be. I mean, producing the information, we're looking for anything that might pertain specifically to what you're mm. seeking. I need help. I am an assist because it's a low stakes roll. Just so you know. Okay. Then if you want to save your drive, you can. All right, I'll save it. Because. Although if I fail, you get it back then it's anyway. Right. I'll I'll do. It. I did. I got it too, so I failed. Okay. Okay. So you're doing you you're doing it anyway then. Yeah, but you oh, roll, roll one more. Yeah. So if you fail, they do get it back. A five. Yay! Yes. That's good Thank you, all. You guys. So glancing through, <coughs> uh, there are a number of performances that are uh, publicly printed within the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Um. In particular, uh, the paper that you have on you uh, would be the paper of the Herald Star. Yeah, the Halen Star. Halen Stars. Halen Star, indeed. Um, and this is have a, a small like entertainment section for those who are looking for things to see. So there are singers, there are bands playing. Um, you do catch uh, note of the what's called the Revisionary, which is an amazing restaurant. Restaurant. Mm. You know that right with a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. A, a restaurant in the varnish um, <laughs> that uh, had a recent grand reopening, not but about six or so months ago, and has been trying to ramp up its entertainment uh, schedule to be competitive with others that stayed open during the war, as this was closed down during the war. Um, and you do see in uh, one of the notes there that mentions a small uh, trio band. One of which, Waylon is noted as one of the trio. Oh, that's remarkable, isn't it? What are they called again? Go there. The revision. Oh, is the, uh, there was the restaurant's one? called the uh, the revisionary. Did that say what the band's name was? That's no, it just has it just had the trio of names. Okay. Um, let's go. Let's go to the revisionary. Yeah. You can have another meal. Oh, delightful. Mm. <laughs> All right. As you. Did... Sorry. Mm. What's your question? Did Reggie say that some some there was a few concerts, right? Reggie said someone's someone's coming in from out of town. That like a, the, yeah. is that, that what you were too. talking about? Is that that's not we, the same as the revisionary though? That's no. The, yeah. We probably shouldn't be looking for like out of towners either, mm -hmm. right? Like like a touring band if they're local musicians. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think yeah. either I think either one is uh, is a good lead. Something. Let's we'll start here. Music. Yeah. It seems odd. Yeah, there is, but yes, but there isn't anything else about that out of town. Out of town band coming in. Nothing in particular at the moment. Okay. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, um, so you feel clear on that path, um, and as you're kind of mentioning this to the rest of the folks, Augie, you kind of glance over your shoulder and you can see one OUP coded figure is trailing back about two blocks behind you, following you as you journey. Maybe we should not want to keep each other. And that's where I'm going to take a break. Oh. Okay. So we're about at that time. So we'll take a little break. Tail? You got a tail. We'll pick up from there. I got a tail. I'm going to spend this break trees. trying to find my name. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen Matthew? He might have my brain with him. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, the man. problem with uh, fail rolls is sometimes that letter doesn't make it to the intended person. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. I love that there's cost to the fails in this yeah. game. Yeah. It makes it so much more. Even even like when it's a, a kind of a success, you could still get a yeah, creepy a beeper in your skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like here, you know, yeah, yeah. Su succeeding in finding information and to clarify what you want in the newspaper, but now you're being tailed. Um, nevertheless, uh, we'll be back here in a few minutes. We'll see you shortly. Hey friends, my name is Spencer Stark. I'm one of the designers of Candela Obscura, a brand new horror role-playing game that follows a centuries-old secret society on their quest to protect humanity from the terrors of the unknown and set in a fictional world filled with turn-of-the-century technology. Candela Obscura is powered by the Illuminated World System, a game engine we've created to facilitate fast, easy to pick up cinematic style play. I'm not gonna cover all the rules here, so make sure you go download the Quick Start Guide if you want more details, but by the end of this video, you should have enough to follow along with the show. 
To play, you'll only need six-sided dice, or D6s. The game uses a dice pool system, which means you'll be rolling a number of these dice and usually taking the highest result. A six represents a full success, a four or five is a mixed success, you get what you want but it comes at a cost, and a three or below is a miss. In order to know how many dice are in your dice pool, we'll need to talk a little bit about character creation. Each player will choose both a role and a specialty inside of that role. Think of these kind of like a class and a subclass. The five roles are face, muscle, scholar, slink, and weird. Each role contains two specialties. The face has journalist and magician, the muscle has soldier and explorer, the scholar has professor and doctor, the slink has criminal and detective, and the weird has medium and occultist. When you choose a specialty, you'll then take its custom character sheet. At the top, you'll find space for your character's name, pronouns, and style, as well as your circle, catalyst, and question. Under circle, you'll write the name of the Candela Obscura group your character is a part of. The catalyst is the moment in your character's life that led them to search out the secret society, and the question is what your character is seeking answers to now that they're within the society. These are jumping off points to help you build out your character's backstory. On the left side of the character sheet, you'll find actions, drives, and resistances. These are the core of the illuminated world system. Each action has a rating between zero and three that determines how many dice you roll when performing that action. Those actions each fall underneath one of three drives, nerve, cunning, and intuition. Nerve includes physical maneuvers like move, strike, and control. Cunning pertains to your interactions with people like sway, read, and hide. And intuition is your mental and metaphysical aptitude like survey, focus, and sense. Whenever you make a roll, you may also spend points from the drive that action falls under to add additional dice to your roll. For example, if you're trying to convince someone to let you into a place you don't belong, the GM may ask you for a sway roll. You would take a number of dice equal to the action rating you have in sway, which in this case would be one, and then you could also spend any of your cunning to add additional dice. I have six available. I'm gonna spend two to get a total of three dice in my pool. Drive points are a liquid currency, so once they're spent, they must be refreshed before they can be used again. Under normal circumstances, there is only one way to refresh drives during an assignment, and this is done through gilded actions, represented by a diamond on the left side of that action. Anytime you make a roll using that action, you'll replace one of the standard dice with a gilded die instead. If you choose to take the gilded die's result, you refresh one point in the drive that encompasses that action. For example, my sway is gilded, so if I took the gilded result on the roll, I would refresh one cunning. Sometimes this might mean you choose to take a lower dice result in an effort to earn back your drive. If you have zero points in an action, you can still roll that action. You can either spend drive points to roll that many dice, or if you don't wanna spend drive, you roll two dice and you take the lower result. Lastly, we have resistances. You'll have a number of these at the start of an assignment and can spend them to reroll dice when you wanna push back on the consequences of a bad roll. Okay, moving to the center of your character sheet, you'll find your character's abilities. These vary from roll to roll and specialty to specialty, but you'll choose one ability from the top section and one from the bottom during character creation. For example, if you choose to play the journalist, you might take an ability that gives you more contacts in the city or lets you tell when people are lying or gains you insider access to important people or places. Below that, you'll find your illumination keys. These represent how you earn experience within the game by offering playable goals to work towards during each assignment. On the right side of your character sheet are marks and scars. Marks are how you take damage. There are three types of marks, body, brain, and bleed. Body represents physical injury, brain represents mental stress and fatigue, and bleed represents damage taken from dangerous magic. Each of these categories has three available slots, and if you're ever inflicted with a mark but cannot take it because the slots are already full, you'll drop incapacitated in the scene, clear the marks to zero in that section, and take a scar. You'll come up with what your scar is, then shift a point from one of your actions to another. This reflects how your character has changed because of the scar that they've taken. If you should ever need to take a scar and all three scar slots are already full, your character is permanently incapacitated or dead. Below that is a section for relationships. This is to write down the names of the other characters you're playing with and the kinds of connections you share with them. You'll also answer prompts based on those relationships that help you flesh out the details. Finally, let's talk about gear. 
On each sheet, there's a list of gear that is unique to that specialty. You don't need to choose your gear ahead of time. In Candela Obscura, you select your gear only when you need it. You may mark up to three gear slots during the assignment, declaring you brought that item with you. And in this way, your character is prepared for any situation they encounter during their investigation. There is plenty more to learn about the Illuminated World system, as well as the world of the Fairlands. So go grab the quick start guide and follow along as we embark upon the strange adventures of Candela Obscura. And welcome back. So, as you are looking to wherever your next destination is here in New Fair, you have just discovered that you are being tailed by a member of the OUP. What are you doing? Psst, psst, psst. What? What? The, 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 the guy is following me. Oh, which guy? The, 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 the Aaron Viber. Is it Aaron or is it some other person from the OUP? 
Is, is he a tall, lanky boy, or is he a normal man? No, it's a normal man. Okay. All right. We should. We should split. Oh, let's, let's get on a cable man. car. Uh, that's an option. We split up. Like staying together. Do you think we can lose him? I mean, a cable car is not a bad idea. Because if he gets on, then it's going to be weird, and mm. then we could just meet him head on. Plus, the it's... cable cars come by so quickly. Maybe we could just hop on before he can. Before do he it. can even get on. Uh, it's worth the effort. Yeah, let's give it a go. All right. So, uh, in this uh, region of the uh, the Red Land, there isn't a a massive uh, like juncture for the cable car. Most of those are established for the more esteemed and Ow. affluent areas of the city, <coughs> but there is one area, and you kind of begin to saddle up along the side, picking up your pace a little bit, and as you kind of glance over your shoulder, you can see that he's picking up his pace a little bit as well, trying to stay within a specific distance. Eventually, you begin to saddle up alongside one of the cable car junctures, like the single one that rides the main central street of the red lamp and one of the other ones that curves into it. And as you begin to kind of lean in that direction, seeing one of the cars now beginning to catch act up. Act like we're not going to take it, act like we're not going to take it, and then we hop on at the very last minute. Oh, God, I do, God, I do. Okay. Just standing here. Just standing. All right, so you're standing there, going Having by. Having a conversation. Yeah. Going by. And then you hear the ding, ding as it begins to approach from the adjacent road that's connecting here that will curve up northward and head towards the varnish. Uh, with that being said, you begin to see the sparks fly from it as it comes up by, and right about the time that you feel it's best to do so, you rush up and leap onto it. As you kind of rush over, just grabbing onto the edge, you watch the sparks fly off the top of it, you head up and leap onto it as you see the figure begin to go into a run to try and like catch Terminate up. T-1000, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Goes running towards the cable car behind you. As it is turning, it's not going maximum speed. Mm -hmm. As it is curving and adjusting its tracks to go ahead and head onto the central main street road and head northward through the city. As you're all kind of on the side, you can see him getting closer and closer and closer and is going to catch up with you and get onto the cable car with oh. you. Oh, is this worth right, it? Maybe, maybe we just, maybe we just meet him head on. You know, and be like, why are you what? It's a bold day, right? All right. So. Um, as a practitioner of a practitioner of the entertainment art of magic, I uh, oh, magic. Oh, oh. I reach into my pocket mm -hmm. and I pull out a hand of a handful of flash powder. Okay. And <clears throat> right as it's beginning to turn, I throw some flash powder down near the wheels, like near where he's running, uh -huh. so it looks like something went off and hopefully will distract him. Okay. So you go ahead and grab the flash powder, and right as he's rushing and jumping for the cable car to, to like get ready to leap and grab onto the outside no, railing, whoosh, this massive flash explosion blasts next to you. This light goes wide, and people nearby just go. Oh. <gasps> people in the cable car kind of pull away. Um, go ahead and uh, no. we'll go ahead and make this a control, control. test for me. All right. Um, <laughs> To see uh, if you can manage to, to hit in just a way that it's going to throw him off. Excellent. So, uh, high stakes? Um, medium stakes. He's just following you. All right. In that case, uh, I am going to. You asked me. Question. Um, uh, uh, it says here that, like, on a high stakes roll, any high stakes roll, you may always spend cunning instead of the drive the roll would normally use, but this doesn't count. This doesn't count. It's like when you said this, so that's. Can't do that here. Sorry, right? repeat that for me. On any high stakes roll, you may always spend cunning instead of the drive the roll we normally use. Right, this would not be considered high stakes. Okay, so. all right. In that case, normally you could spend cunning. If you fail, it's not cunning. All right, I'm going to spend a drive to get a die. I'm going to spend a nerve drive to get a con control drive. Right, um, anyone dice. wants to help me? I yes, certainly. You know what? Little, I'm going to use from? Uh, nerve. I'm going to use saw this coming again. Um, okay. So we've done this before. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've done this. We've done this magic move before. All right. So, how do you help with this? The flash powder <clears throat> toss on this. I say, do it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Especially as one who's who's used to jumping trolley cars, you know exactly yes. where the optimal <laughs> stepping point is. Please be good to me. They're not being good to me. <gasps> there were uh, there, there was a two, a two, and a one. Oh no. A two, a two, and a one. Jeez. Oh, no. That's a bad one. Wait! I have a resistance. So I'll spend that uh, resistance. 
All right. Which means I get oh, one die. One die to throw. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, Doesn't count, okay. it's not in my box. That's what she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a it three. Didn't want it to the dice did not Damn. want that to happen. It, it was, did not want wasn't that meant to be for this one. Damn it. You throw the powder down, it flashes, but the figure kind of cloaks the front of them as they leap on and grab the edge of the trolley car as it begins to pick up speed and cruise upward. Right as you kind of back away, the figure's standing there now, and you can see it's a, uh, a man in his 30s or so, kind of a bit built in the shoulders, wide, wearing the familiar coat. His hair's longer and slicked back, kind of behind the ears, just kind of curling forward slightly. Long, thin nose and kind of an intense stare, and he kind of just, as he's holding onto the edge, goes, you must be careful with such dangerous materials in a public space, Charlotte. I can't imagine what you're talking about. Do I know him? You do not know this person, okay. but they seem to know you. I can't imagine what you're talking about, officer. Mm. Don't worry about it. Continue your business. I'm just here to keep an eye. Hmm. Pray tell, what exactly are you here to investigate? Obviously, since you're a member of such an esteemed organization. None of your business. Just go about yours. I mean, we were going to church, so if you're going to come with us to a service, is that what you want to do? Apparently. Take me to church, then. Teach me of the Ascendancy's majesty. Hmm. Should I go to church? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. I thought that was going to win. quietly I rides alongside you as it kind of cruises up the street. Hmm. So how long have you worked for the OUP? Who said I worked for the OUP? Your blazer, your, your pea coat. I only see them wearing that particular shape. Hmm. So you deal with them often? Hmm? The OUP, to recognize the attire. Oh, I'm just um, a bit of a fashion girl. Interesting. Well, long enough. It's now heading into the varnish, kind of cruising up a bit of the incline. Where are you looking to get off? Well, not where we were going to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Visit to your How about? Oh, no, I don't want him to know where I live. That's true. What if we all just get off in different places? Yes, it's a wonderful idea. We'll meet back at the. Where was it? Where was it? The place. <laughs> yeah, that's mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'll stay on. Okay. He seems to suspect me more than anyone. Oh, yeah, Augie's really good at. Are we the, saying, we're saying this quietly. I understand, mm -hmm. but the nerves are getting to you, and as it begins to build, and the anxiety of him just staring straight at you out of recognition of who you are, you do take a brain as the stress begins oh. to build up within you. Oh, no. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. My name is Gertrude. I mean, uh, Ethel. I mean, uh, <laughs> Augie's really, Charlotte. Augie's really good at slipping out of sight, so maybe Augie should be the last one to get off. Wonderful idea. Yeah, I'll stay here and meet you where? Uh, at the wait. Yes. I'll hop off. Okay. Doesn't bother. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to stare politely at him. Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> You're scattered somewhere in the middle of the varnish at the moment. Okay. And the restaurant is in the varnish? It is. Right. You, you actually just passed it, I'll say, about a block ago. Okay. So you're not that far away. Great. <clears throat> oh no, I feel faint. And then I'll step <laughs> off the back of the. Uh... <laughs> kind of like gives for a little bit of movement and then kind of holds tight, looking back at you. Okay. Halfway through the varnish now. It's going to be shortly curving into either. probably towards Hollow Harbor before heading over towards. Mm -hmm. The shrine line. Well, I guess I'm gonna go to say my prayers. <laughs> You're such a pious boy. <laughs> you dart off, watches you go, kind of oh, clocks no, you for Shirley. just a moment. That's all right. He gets back to looking at you. So tell me about you, officer. I'd rather not. I know you'd rather not, but it's going to be a rather long trip if you're going to join me as I visit my former mentor. Not much of a conversationalist. Mm, I can see that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase after the car. It, 
try to. At okay, least. it's a it's a sprint to keep okay. up with it. Okay, right. hang on a second. So, Let me take a look at my geography. Yeah. Where are the? Would this actually go to the eaves, or is it going up? Or, um, uh, uh, this particular line would. Uh, no, this particular line is going to curve around on the north and eastern side. It's going to head from Hello Harbor into the Shrive Line, and then back through the Steam. And so this is this one line is kind of moving away from the eaves, oh, actually. So I'm going to go over and look at. I'm sure there's a map on the side of the. You know, like just like just like we have in our trains. I'm just going to look at the map. Oh no, I've picked up the wrong line. Uh, officer, would you care to accompany me? I, I need to skip lines because you see, I have to visit the eaves. You go where you need to be. Mm -hmm. I shall. So I'm going to skip whatever line I have to to be able to get back onto something that would go to the eaves. Okay, so you step off the trolley. Mm -hmm. He steps off with you. Mm -hmm. Just kind of stays like five feet from you. Mm -hmm. Just kind of an attached accompaniment. Wonderful. And I'll you kind of like <sighs> watch as she steps off and the figure steps with her. Okay, I'm just watching from afar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what can I do to lose this fellow? I've worked. Where am I? I've tried to work my way back around. Toward where Arlo got off since mm -hmm. I've since I've hopped off, I'm yeah. trying to like make my way to them. Not a problem. And where where am I? Where have we gotten off? Uh, you would be up, right on the cusp of Hallow Harbor. On the north, uh, uh, north northwestern end. Right. All right. Um, I'm just going to briskly walk towards whatever line I would get to as I'm trying to think of what I can do. Um, is there? Ah, damn. Are there any of my? Little folks like young Augie. Uh, would, that, would I know of anyone in the area who I might have in the area? Unfortunately, no. Your okay. your network is, you know, effective in the spaces where you do work, but you're also one of many purveyors in this town. And I'm off at I'm off at the border of one to five. I mean, of, of Hallow Harbor to the Shrive Line. Uh, of the varnish to Hallow Harbor. Varnish. So you're probably pretty close to your place. So I'm right here. No, my place is all the way over here. Um, to, to sight on the but the Shrive Line is where the churches are, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I'm going to hop off. You know, I think I will pay a visit to church. Would you care to join me? Be my guest. Um, you're going to move into the, the closest church. Um, in our particular religious tradition at this church, do we have, say, a confessional? Yes, right. so there would be. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm going to head into the confessional. He stays back about ten or so feet mm -hmm. as one of the uh, vestment-wearing caretakers of this particular cathedral kind of greets you as you enter. Uh, welcome, welcome to our establishment. Please do uh, put your mind at rest and uh, bring your piety in how best it suits your uh, arrival upon our doorstep. Thank you so much, Father. Uh, I need to... Uh... I'm here to absolve myself. Uh, may I? Uh, uh, but of course, yes, mm. please. And you, of course, are also welcome to join us in prayer or wait if you'd like for this. And the gentleman's kind of, I'm fine. And just gives a fake smile. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to go into the confessional. Oh, God help me for what I'm about to do. Um, uh, into the confessional. Is he uh, staying outside? No, he's he inside. He's, he's about inside. ten feet from the confessional, just waiting. No, it's not a hot priest. We're not going flea bag. Um, um, uh, I'm not going there. It's, it's extreme. That would be a high stakes roll. Um, very high stakes. Please, uh, I'm very lonely. <laughs> we have different roles in this world. Forgive me, Father. Uh, I have definitely sinned, and I have many transgressions to report, but. Right now, I need your help. The gentleman you see outside has followed me. I don't know him. I don't know why he's following me, but I'm scared. Is there any place that I can go, perhaps, to sit and wait him out? Make a sway roll. Thank God. All right, with a sway roll, this one, I am gonna spend a drive and <clears throat> And we can't help if we're not uh, around. No. Two. <gasps> you have no means of helping. No. Two and a guild. Wait. Two, one is gilded plus one. No, why the fuck not? I'll do two. Just get me. 
fuck out of here, Bobby. Get me the fuck out of here, Bobby. Big spender. Five. Five, okay. Uh, the, the priest on the other side of the thresh booth goes, very well, my child. Um, uh, when I escort him from the room, uh, the far back door on the right leads to uh, my office. Uh, there should be a door behind that that you could use to escape out the back of the cathedral. Thank you, Father. Um, is there somewhere that I can donate to the church? Uh, feel free to come by any day, and we'll be able, happy to take any donations you wish. Thank you, Father. Ah, just a moment. And exits, and you hear him go, ah, my child here uh, has seen quite a, a terrifying day and uh, requires a direct consultation uh, with a higher power. As such, we're going to be uh, exiting the chamber uh, for the time being. It is a very, and here's some voices going, oh, okay, and kind of un 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 It's like, uh, you as well, sir. Um, sorry, that's, n that's not going to work. I believe it is, uh, by the power best by me and the ascendancy, uh, you are within our jurisdiction, uh, and uh, you have to exit at the request of a man of the cloth. There's a long pause. Very well. And here. Just. <laughs> So that is so he said exit out the back. Is what he said. He said, he said just there is a uh, like a an office room. in the back. Office. Yeah. Okay. Um, is is there like a sneaking option? Even because I don't trust that that guy like really left. I feel like he likes sneaky McSneakerson. I mean, you can try and make a hide test if you want to want to go for all of them. Spend all the drives. No, come on. I can't. I'm not spending all the drives. Okay. Right. We'll so I'm going later. to sneaky sneaky. I'm going to I'm going to just go. I'm just going to go as as fast as I can. Yeah. Okay. You dart out, and you can see, like, yeah. pushing the doors closed with the help of a few other hands, you do not see the other gentleman within the room. Next success, what the fuck is going to go wrong? Um, <laughs> I'm going back into the office, and in the office there is a... So back, you see inside here, it's, it, it looks like a, a very modest office quarters. There's a desk, there's some furniture, and there is a back door that leads out there. Do I have anything with me? I don't. Mm -hmm. Did I see him walk out? trust anything. You do no, see him don't. walk out. Yeah. Okay. He's just standing there waiting. He's currently like he gets pushed out and starts like looking through the the windows, which themselves are, are they're too opaque with the darker interior to see from the daylight in the mid afternoon. The dude is looking through the windows. The, you, the, you don't know. Oh, okay. I'm outside <laughs> watching him. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't see that. Uh, nope. What are you doing? Um, I, uh, I just real quick. I'm looking around the office. Is there anything, a cloak, uh, uh, vestments, anything that I could potentially put on? Yeah, looks like there. There is an. Uh, looks like a, uh, a heavy cloak for rain and weather that is currently set upon a coat rack towards the back door. Actually, what's the weather out right now? Uh, I mean, it, it's not raining. The the storm. The recent storms have passed. It's been foggy in the evenings, but um, and it's is, a chilled afternoon. Is the father coming to the office, or is he just kind of like out front, like? You don't know. You just walked into the office. Okay. Um, fuck. Uh, I'm going to. Gra I'm gonna. I'm gonna start grabbing the the. Raincoat, and um, and definitely acting as if I am nervous and afraid, uh, which I kind of am. Um, and take a, just take a look behind me to see if, if the father's coming or not. Uh, you can see him like walking towards the office. Yeah. Right. Um. Steal the man of the cloth. Yeah. Cloth. Oh, I just want to <laughs> just just want to peek out and say, thank you, father. May I borrow these? If it. Aids you uh, to stay safe. Yes, of course. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna put it over. Um, cover myself up as much as physically possible, and do I go out that door to out the front? Go, go as fast as I can out that back door. Okay, right as you're right as you're leaving, the uh, the father goes, uh, and as a reminder, please, uh, a donation would be greatly appreciated. Oh, uh, <laughs> father. Right now, I'm happy to donate, but I can get you more if I can come back. Both would be appreciated. Wonderful, absolutely, Father. Here, I take out a full pouch. I pop it on his desk. Thank you. Thank you. Your initial donation has been accepted. Yes, of course. That's fine. Wow. Um, if you only knew how I was making my money. Um, uh, great. <laughs> I put everything on, and I bust a move out. Okay. 
you exit out the back and kind of in a rush as you're charging out, kind of darting around, making a big wide corner around the nearby alleys on the outside of the cathedral. Um, you do, kind of looking over your shoulder to make sure he's not watching, like crack the edge of your shoulder along the side of one of the uh, outside like shop signs. As it hits, you feel like a pop. Oh. And you're like, ah, oh, that hurt, but it's not going to stop you. And you keep running, feeling the warmth begin to flow through your arm. You do take a body. Yeah. Did you guys know that my, my shoulders are double jointed and I can pop them out? Well, it's fun facts to know and tell. Not, uh, it's not that's not for me. That's 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 me, not Charlotte. That's not a special skill. She has. That's not on the sheet. <laughs> so, no. I know that feeling intimately. It's a wonderful. There thing. you go. Happy to keep it visceral. Yes, thank you. But after a short time, with the help of those vestments and the bit of chaos, the cathedral, it seems you've lost the OUP officer. Yes. Nice. And about a half an hour later, you begin to reconvene with the rest of your friends here, back in the varnish, on the outskirts of the Revisionary Restaurant, which at this point in the afternoon uh, is seeing a bit of business. You know, it's maybe about eight or nine uh, individuals that are currently seated inside amongst four different tables. It's not bustling, but it definitely is like a nice, nice afternoon lunch period. You can, as you come to it, you can see the beautiful big glass arched windows with multiple panes in them. Uh, everything kind of has this kind of br smooth, polished brass look to it alongside the pillars and the doors as you go, and it definitely is a, a beautiful establishment. And uh, many windows, so a lot of the sunlight comes through, but you can see there are many uh, lamps and lanterns that hang from within that will uh, glow as they're being lit as the day gets on. You can see the top has like tin uh, panels all across the upper roof, giving a nice kind of like art deco vibe to the interior. Uh, there's a bar to the farther back, and there's a stage. Uh, the number of stools, and it looks like it's it's a nice it's a nice place. Is it, uh, is it the, are there people there right now, or is it? Yeah, there's, 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 okay. Okay. Sorry, I was still. Are there any t tables available though? There are, right? There are, yeah. Um, I guess while it took time to get back to us, the professor and I will have grabbed a mm -hmm. a table waiting for everyone. Okay. How's it going? There's a stage. Is there a stage for there musicians? Is a stage for me. There's a stage for musicians. Um, okay. <clears throat> All right. We're, we're in the right place. <clears throat> what time was the show supposed to start? Does anyone recall? Excuse me. Yes. You have musicians here, correct? Occasionally, yes. Are any playing tonight? There's supposed to be tonight, yes. Who are playing tonight? Oh, they reach in their pocket and pull out this like crinkled note and kind of <laughs> unfold it, set their tray to the side for a second. Uh, that would be Kara, Waylon, and Theodore. Wonderful, thank you. You're welcome. Are the musicians here preparing already? No, they usually come here just after sunset. Thank you. You're welcome. Did he say what Kara? Time? He did yeah, say wasn't Kara. It, wasn't it, wasn't it, wasn't it was also the name of the say? assistant. I don't know if that's a, I mean, it's, could be a potential. Could a be a winky dink? Could be a winky dink. Yeah. I don't know if I've made it here yet. Have I made it here? Lying to us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could I was, be the other thing. I was thing. trailing you, making sure. Okay. What if she was actually his lover? And she came to check on him. And she's a beat now. No, that would be weird. Oh, and she was lying. Sounds like just conjecture at this point. But it is. All good ideas. Yeah. yeah. But just ideas, uh, unsubstantiated. Do we see? Uh, um, Are we wasting it, it was just their. At a restaurant? It was just their first names. It didn't have their last names. No, they were just like known as the uh, first name trio. How long until sunset is it? Uh, about four hours. Oh, <laughs> oh well, geez, Louise. About three to four hours. We're not waiting here until they come. No. <sighs> yes. All right. All right. Uh, next step. Uh, excuse me, uh, how often does this trio play here? Uh, a different waiter comes by. Uh, uh, the, the performing trio. For yes. The They're, uh, they've only been here for about two or so weeks, oh. like three nights out of the week. Oh, wonderful. Um, I'm intrigued by the fact that one of them, uh, I'm a dabbler in music myself, and there are very few women that I know who do the same. I, I, I was wondering if this uh, Cara, if you know anything about her, I'm a bit of a fan. I, I've just seen them around here when they perform. That's about it. We don't really, you know, don't engage with the musical guests that often. Right. And and what instruments do they play? 
Oh, well, uh, there's a horn, there's a bass, and there is uh, one of those small pianos that they bring in. Hmm. They bring in a piano? Well, no, we have a piano on premises. We bring it oh. up there and they play it. What time do they usually get here to like warm up and stuff, you know? Sound check. About sunset, I think. Oh, they get here about yeah, sunset. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they oh, don't start that. Maybe we should um, spend some time in another location until they get here. I think that's an excellent idea. That's a great idea. Um, great. Thank you so much. Um, we'll finish our drinks and pay up. We'll come back. Of course, yeah. My, my shift ends in an hour, so I won't see you. Mm. I just pay it and we should just go immediately. Should well, we pay for us a visit? Yeah, I mean, the house is close by. The eaves yeah. are a short trip across the bridge. Yeah, it's not far. Yes. Yeah. And I definitely know my way around the eaves. But they don't live in the eaves. They, they live, live in the Briar, Briar Green, Green, right? They live in the Briar Green. Yeah, they live in Briar that's Green. how I know them. Yeah. Right. Wait, do you live in the Briar Green? She does. Yes. Oh, I do as well. Shit. Oh. oh. Green is right next to the eaves, so it's a short trip. Yeah. Right. <coughs> so, uh, might as well, it's a journey around the city. It's a sort of hop on, hop off tour. Yeah. <laughs> what's, your, what's on your mind? Oh, nothing. I just don't know how much I glean from walking around, uh, talking to people, but I suppose it's the only choice we have at this point. I, I, other than going back to that store room, or speaking again to Skitty, I, I don't know what else, I don't know where else to go. No, I think we've tapped Skitty out. Um, well, suppose we should talk to the husband. Yes. Yes. I agree. Maybe he gifted her some jewelry that mm. was left behind, and, and there was something in the jewelry. Magical jewelry? Maybe. All right. Should we check it out? Well, you have the jewels? I have you the, have the, the chain. Have we taken a closer look at that? It's the and only evidence no, we've actually taken. There was no it? bleed on it, but there we haven't no like looked to yeah. see. Does it have an look. engraving yeah. or anything? Take a look at the chain. Uh, it doesn't have an engraving on it. It, it looks like a loose wrist chain. Mm -hmm. um, looks like it's gold. Probably worth a decent right. amount of money for for a piece of jewelry that was left behind. But hmm. Uh, okay, we punched this guy. The assistant could be the musician. Hang on, I'm going through all of my notes to see if there's anyone else we can possibly. You know, we're still looking didn't, didn't someone say that there was like a a, a, a thing coming in? Like a, something, something's coming in There from was a port? shipment coming in from port. Yeah. And we, we did learn that she, um, that the chamber woman uh, had been sort of stopping up the works in terms of import-export uh, from... Uh, the guilds. The, uh, from the outer areas. Yeah. Guild so... Import tariffs, local and abroad. Our area of expertise, I believe, was taxes and tariffs. Yes. Uh, never, uh, never friendly with uh, people trying to execute free commerce. Uh, also, uh, perhaps came uh, nose to nose with trade unions. Typically, another portion. I believe there's some form of teamsters or something down at the docks. I would go, the docks. Uh, but uh, again, it depends on what we're looking for: motives or witnesses. If we're looking for witnesses, I suppose we should continue on and try to wait for, for Wayland to come back. But if we're looking for motive, it's typically within the politics of a politician. But again, just pure conjecture. Yes. Uh, uh. It's about this time that the initial. <laughs> to sneeze. I was, I was like, she's having an idea, I mean, no, I like, no, and it hurts. An idea or just uh. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, overcome. Uh, it went away. The original server comes by and goes, oh, I'm sorry, I regret to inform you. I was just checking in the back and they were notified a short time ago that the band will not be playing tonight. Oh, oh true. No. Why not? Uh, no reason, you were just told they uh, Who told me. you? Yeah. I was just notified, I, I, I don't know who told me. Uh, who told you? Told me my manager. Right, so let's go to the manager. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna walk up to the manager. Excuse me. Uh, Oh, we heard that the trio isn't performing tonight. Is that true? This much older woman in her like early sixties or so, very well put together and kind of holding her hands together, clasped her chest. Uh, that is correct. Uh, it, uh, are I, any of the musicians coming? I, I, I so very much wanted to see one of them. Unfortunately, no. Uh, mm. One of them told me that they're canceling the performances for the foreseeable future. Was he future. here? Uh, she was. She came by. Oh, where did she go? Uh, this is a few hours ago. I don't know where she went. 
the one named Kara. Yes, Kara, what's her last name? Uh, Belton. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much. <gasps> right. She did it. All right, so, you um, piece of trash. Okay, she said that she worked for the chamber. Well, we can, we can leave, right? Yes. Uh, what if she wasn't wanting to answer any more questions? Right. It would be odd to leave out the information that she played in a band with the potential accomplice of her boss's disappearance. Yeah, that's a little weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Methinks mm. she's hiding something. Oh, you think? Uh, we have to find her. Maybe the manager knows where she lives. Oh, uh, okay. Do you know where Kara lives? I do not. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> Can I read her and see if she actually is? Yes, you may. You may make a read. Mm. Roll mm. Or get pass it, that get read. Of mixed success. Mixed success with a five. With a five. Um, best you can tell, <coughs> she does not. She doesn't. She has enough to worry about with this business and establishment than to worry about wherever the occasional bands that come through reside within the city. Um, and you see she actually looks pretty perturbed that the evening's entertainment has suddenly canceled a few hours before they were supposed to arrive, which means either she has to find a replacement or they're just not going to happen. Mm. What would the oh, right. uh, chamber woman, uh, uh, what would her office be? What would, where would the chamber woman's office be? Uh, that would likely be in the... Where the primacy is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which would be... Silver slip. Silver slip. Yes. Mm. Um, okay. She said she was an assistant to 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 the chamber woman, the chamber woman and to not t talk to the husband about it. So maybe we go talk to the husband because maybe he'll tell us a different story. Maybe, or maybe she didn't want us to. She didn't want her secret to be found out that she didn't actually work for her. Let's go. Let's go. I like it. Let's go. Yes. Okay. We're going to find something. Going to buy a green. Sounds like a plan. So yes. Buy a green. Would I know where the Ferrises reside? Uh, you would know, actually. Uh, very nice estate as you approach, but actually, <coughs> trains across the bridge and coming to Briar Green, uh, you find amongst the, the very opulent homesteads that kind of scatter this area, amongst the clusters of uh, bright, uh, like verdant parks and tree clusters and the well kept. Uh, bushes and ferns that mark the corner of every major street. It is definitely uh, one of the most uh, beautified areas mm -hmm. of New Fair. Uh, and amongst these, you come to the uh, the estate of uh, the, the the Ferris estate itself. You can see the uh, the high iron fence that surrounds the beautiful uh, kind of rising hill of green grass and well kept hedges that lead up to the front of the uh, two story, pretty much a mansion. Um, it's painted mostly in grays and whites, the bits of like a deep blue in the awnings and the edges of the windows. Um, it's very, very nice. Um, very, very nice. It's, it's yeah, very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez Louise. Um, is there any um, officer around or? Currently you don't see any officers around. It is getting later in the afternoon. Uh, you're probably about an hour and a half from sunset at this point. All right. Um, Two hours oh from God. sunset. Okay, um, let's go n knock on the door. Oh, right. Okay. The door, you knock a few times. Eventually, a little window kind of opens up and you see these like tiny beady eyes kind of listen, look through and open the doors and you see uh, this gentle in the face, uh, Woman in maid attire, um, in probably your fifties or so, uh, peek through. I can I help you. Hi, is Mr. Ferris home? He is. She's had a very hard day. Will you tell him that Arlo Black of the Black Estate is here to pay a visit? All right, all right, all right. Closes the door, wanders off for a bit. A few minutes later, the door opens again. Uh, he'll he'll greet you in the study. Thank you so much. Um, anything we notice, uh, other than the fact that it's very, very opulent around us? Uh, yeah, walking through, as you come through, it is, it is long, kind of marble floor hallways, uh, high-reaching, white-painted walls with uh, little 
paintings and sculptures. All the paintings in particular in this area are uh, beautiful. You see many landscapes and coastlines. Um, occasionally, there's like a slightly off painting that has like deep shadows and uh, unique architecture. Uh, that kind of like kind of is a stark contrast to some of the more bright displays here. Um, but as you continue down the long hallway across the gray paint and the um, wainscoting that tends to kind of mark the edges of the walkway. To the right, you see there's an, uh, an open archway that leads into a fireplace that is currently kind of crackling in the corner. Uh, a large painting of a man and a woman kind of sitting together, a portrait. And uh, you can see there's bookshelves in the sides, there's uh, kind of a sitting couch on one side and a couple of other large chairs on the other. And across the way, you see a man kind of resting his hand on the fireplace itself, kind of turned back, looks to the rest of you. And you see a man here in his uh, early 50s, thinning, uh, black hair that's turned to gray on the sides. Um, he is wearing a, a white button-up shirt, but it's mostly unbuttoned at the top. Ties are kind of dangling around the sides. Sleeves are rolled up past the elbows. Um, left hand is like kind of bandaged. He's wearing slacks, and in the other hand, you see him holding what looks to be an open Container of some sort of brown, brackish liquid. Looks back to the rest of you. Oh no! Welcome. It's been some time. Okay. What are you doing here? Um. Well, I know you and I haven't had many interactions. Pours into a glass that's on the mantle and sets it aside. And takes the glass. But you may have heard. Um, my experience with the Eastons a few years back. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry to say I've heard through the, through talking today about um, what happened with your wife. Word's getting around, isn't it? It happens fast. Yeah, doesn't surprise me. What all did you hear? Mixed stories. Um, what all did you hear? Hmm. Sai Yang kind of like scrapes his chin a little bit, takes a big sip, walks up. Well, she's missing. And she might be missing with someone. Right. And I can see on your face you already knew this, so that's getting around too. That's great, that's fucking great. You know, when Eddie went missing, people said all sorts of things. We can't believe the rumors, can we? <laughs> Not unless it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Who are the rest of you? What are you doing? Who did you bring with you? After Eddie went missing, I... I didn't want anyone to have to suffer through that anymore. I, I wanted to find answers. So these are my compatriots. Um, they help me find answers. Well, great. Hope you find them. We'd like to help you find some answers too. Cool. <clears throat> what can I do to help? I've been answering a lot of questions today, I'm so sure. uh, let's just put them on the pile. When you said that it uh, makes a lot of sense, and forgive me for being indelicate, but could you could you expand on that? Well, you know, we've been married for the better part of 15, 16 years, and work keeps her very busy, doesn't come home a lot of nights because she has a lot of work to do, emotional distance that continues to grow, like the fucking vast chasm between the two of you, uh, and then, you disappear the day, a couple days after your anniversary, and then, uh, you know, it all just kind of makes sense when you put it together, right? Oh. Are there any people that, are there any people that you know that she works particularly close with that might, um, we might be able to speak to, who might know, I don't know, like assistance or anything like that? Maybe Kara, and you see, kind of fidgets with the bandage on his hand a little bit. Uh, yeah. What What happened to your hand? Nice. Got some sort of weird infection thing. 
Uh, we're, 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 Our friend we're... here is a, a doctor. PhD. Uh, I'm already taking pills. Don't worry about it. Uh, oh, well, we've actually been uh, researching a strange occurrence uh, with um, in the area. I, I, I teach over at uh, Briarbank, and uh, there have been some interesting cases uh, coming to our medical department. I, I would love to see your hand to make sure that you might not be infected. Just a glance. Oh, show him. Uh, wanna just to say if he's ever seen anything like it. Well, uh, we have some medical samples that we took recently yes. from some other test subjects. A, a strange parasite. Have you ever heard about the recent shipments coming in from across the vast chasm? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I know well. That's what my wife was trying to keep controlled. Why? Is this kind of shit that people are letting creep into the town now? Is this some sort of like after the war, subtle Cold War warfare against we our people? We have no what, idea. What All we know is that this, the bleed container, this, um, this. Maybe a uh, foreign parasite or a. Uh, Oh, God. Some sort of like, uh, worm, <laughs> perhaps. Uh, it was found in a shipment of plantains. Pulls his bandage off and like holds it out to you. So much <laughs> for being your cooperation. And you look at his at his palm, like right there in the palm, the skin is black oh, no. for about the size of like a heavy coin, and you can see there's like black veins that kind of like uh -oh. spider out from it in the middle. Uh oh. How did you get such a wound? I have no idea. Only just started about a day, day and a half ago. Oh, stigmata. <laughs> Did you notice if your wife had anything similar? Nothing I saw. Have the two of you uh, done anything outside of the ordinary, perhaps for your anniversary, go on a uh, exotic evening out, or do something you've never done before to celebrate the occasion? I mean, <laughs> he kind of takes his bandage and holds it and looks at it, goes like, well, uh, Oh, and that's very particular about her presence, you see. So uh, oh. make sure that I don't get her the wrong thing. Uh, I tend to take her shopping for what she wants. So we, uh, yeah, we went out and went shopping. Went and got her something nice, and uh, went and had dinner, and then came home, and that was it. Uh, what did you get her, by any chance? Uh, I had this necklace commissioned by uh, this person that was a friend of hers named Dorna. Dorna, what was the name? He thinks to himself for a second. Dorna Ashfar. She runs the Alizarin Gallery oh. in the the Varnish. That's right. I was gonna say, uh, yeah, I, your, your artwork. Is any of this like? Jesus. Yeah, most old of the stuff. Old and is this all from from that gallery? Probably some of the creepier shit. Yeah, I don't pick this. This is all Annette's thing. She's been. Going to that gallery for the past six or so months, and uh, so I figured that'd be a good place to ask. Mm. What did the jewelry look like? Oh, it was a. Uh, <laughs> kind of catches off self for a second. Ironically, imported from otherwhere. <laughs> this beautiful emerald that Dorna showed us and presented as uh, an intricate and rare piece technically illegal and contraband because of the source, mm. which of course enticed Onet. And so I paid a healthy sum to have it crafted into a necklace and uh, held onto it until it was time to go ahead and give it to her the night of the anniversary. Had Kara, her assistant, ever seen the necklace? I don't believe so. It was a uh, type of pendant, this emerald, worn around a necklace? Yeah, it was around a... Huh. He kind of seems scratching the dark spot in his hand again. He goes, so if I recall, Kara, Kara's the one that I think introduced her to Dorna originally. Oh. Well, do you have any uh, plans uh, for this upcoming Thursday? Anything on the, I know you're an aspiring writer. Uh, my office hours are open. I would love uh, to take a look at, at your work to say thank you for this information and maybe you could uh, bring your hand by too. And, Let's see if there's a few doctors in the community might want to take a look. Do you think this is this is like that thing you showed me? Can, can I look at the hand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any wiggling under the skin? Can I see any kind of movement? Uh, 
You can make a sense roll if you'd like. A sense roll. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Oh yeah. I guess I could pull out the bleed detector too. And just whip out this massive yeah, device. Just, just, just my <laughs> so tiny. It's just no, I know, I know. Well, it's definitely gonna, it's 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 not the, subtle. The I'm room's gonna glow blue. Try <laughs> to get an extra die here. Okay. Mixed success with a four. Mixed success. Uh, there is a strong source of bleed on his hand. Mm. Whatever sat there definitely left an impression, and uh, it looks like it's not spreading. Spreading. It's localized in the hand. But it definitely has corrupted the flesh in his palm. <gasps> a, a, a bleed containment valve wouldn't necessarily you, suck that up, would it? As you kind of concentrate on it and kind of look towards it, you feel this strange, like, hunger pang in your stomach. Like this, this, this sudden urge to just kind of just grab and pull his hand towards you and you kind of like this horrible sudden urge kind of filters through you and you pull away um, and as you do you kind of feel that bleed drift into you for just a moment as you process that it had briefly moved from his hand and spread into yours you do take a bleed and how does the bleed affect you when it spreads into your body well i still have a whole in the middle of my hand from before that has not been fixed <laughs> at all. So what before felt like numbness that would move into cold now is like sharp panes of glass shooting up my arm. Mm. So you instinctually <laughs> pull away. It's like, uh. Everything all right? Uh, yes, but you should definitely um, do something about that. All right, I'll, I'll definitely come by. Yeah. I, I've been working on this really great YA novel. How are I think you'll really enjoy. Oh, my absolute favorite. I'm that, have you felt different at all lately? <laughs> he takes his glass and takes a big old drink. Yeah, a little bit. Before, I mean, before you heard the news. I'm not quite following you. You know what, Mr. Ferris, I know I said Thursday, but please feel free to stop by any time. My door is open to you. I would love to read your young adult novel. Thank you. Uh, it's about this couple that meets outside of the Scarlet oh, Way yes. over a horse. Excellent. Um, I'm slowly backing toward the door. <laughs> <laughs> but the horse is a metaphor. Oh, oh, I see her. Mm. Well, thank, thank you for coming by. You're, you're, trying, you're trying to find her, right? Yeah. Yes. And you can see, like, he's, he's, he's a little tipsy, but he's like sobering up a little bit. And he's like, he starts re bandaging his hand as he sets his glass down. Cool. Just bring it back safe. All right. At least we got some things to work through. Obviously. Do you by any chance know where we might be able to find Kara? I actually don't. Mm. No. I know where we can try. Right. Let's head to the gallery. Okay. Oh, yeah. How long has she been working for <clears throat> you guys again, Kara? Kara? Five years. Mm. Okay. Um, thank you. Well, thank you for your honesty and apologies for any difficulty we caused you asking more questions. I know it's a hard time. Well, just bring her back. Okay. You should cut your hand off. Oh, and then I, 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 I think that was just a good <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Remember when I said that your directness was an asset? Perhaps just he among should, us. Though. Yes, he but should. perhaps just among us. Uh, to the gallery. Mm -hmm. As fast as we can. That he could turn into a monster. We should cut his hand off. Oh, though. I'd be delighted. Uh, it's, uh, wait, who knows what that burrowing thing could do? I think he has some time. 
How do you know? Well, it's been a few days and it's only in his hand. It hasn't taken. We've seen what happens when it takes over. He should be fine until oh. we figure out the more immediate problem. Howard, if he turns into a monster, I'm blaming you. <laughs> you should have cut his hand off. Is that, right. is, is that, is that what, what's on your hand? Oh, no, 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 no. I have a weird void inside of mine. Uh, <laughs> and you go and look and see there is a split in the middle of the palm that is about the size of a nickel, and it is just this black darkness. It's quite huh. something, isn't it? Why is that there? I don't know. Well, I do know. But I'd never seen the void before our last assignment. What, what happened to your hand? Um, as we walk to the as gallery. As we walk to the gallery, mm -hmm. walk and talk. Um, my fiance was taken. Eddie? Eddie. You know, he was quite interested in, in old fair relics, and he may have done some bad things, and, well, I came to see him, and he was being pulled through some sort of doorway, or portal, or hole, and I tried to... Save him. My arm went through. And... Well, I, I pulled my arm back out, and Eddie did not come back out. I have a theory it's some sort of a parallel dimension. A physical space you can enter and then re-enter, but since only part of her body went in, it, well, I can't proclaim to know, but the, poor Eddie is, I'm sure he's fine. He could still be there. He could. Anything's possible. The creature who took him had gray skin. Maybe I'm turning into one. Charlotte's just kind of staring off into space with the shock of this news. So, uh, are you, are you? Are you single now? Like I don't know what you what you're doing. It's with it's not for me. I'm just wondering, just seeing if like. Well, I'm not single, Augie. We're engaged. You're engaged. You're engaged. You and me. Don't you remember? Oh, that's right. That's right. I would very much like to talk with you about that sometime. Not the engagement. The the hand. I'm very curious about exactly what this experience looked like. Speaking of hands. Have you ever heard of the red hand? Or a red hand? Any tell of red hands in the Red Lamp District? Now you would know, not because of any citywide knowledge or urban street smarts here in New Fair, you would know because you are one of the more experienced members of Candela Obscura. Mm -hmm. What you do know of red hand, though you have not encountered them yourself, is they are known as a faction of uh, Procurers and dealers of old Farron artifacts, as well as uh, scavenged and found things that exist from history long buried and forgotten. Um, operating by some of the same avenues and networks as Candela once and sometimes still uses, but definitely for the purposes of self enrichment, as well as selfish curiosity and uh, power. Why do you ask? Eddie had some dealings with them. I've never been able to find out more. Hmm. Curious. Perhaps this uh, Dorna will be able to shed some light. Uh, we're going to the yeah, we're going to the gallery. The gallery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. The about this time in the. The rest of the journey you take into the varnish to the outskirts of the Alizarin Gallery. The sun is beginning to set, the sky itself falling to the purples and oranges. Uh, the fog is beginning to settle in as the temperature begins to drop, and you can hear the clatter of horse hooves and carriages and the occasional uh, electric-based 
horseless carriage pass its way through the street. Uh, the trolley comes scooting by, the familiar bell and crackle. Um, but the varnish is now coming to life, as it does every evening. And as you approach the exterior of the gallery, it too is quite busy, as it is a showing tonight. Um, specifically, a gallery entitled The Shadows of Memory. As you begin to step into the warmer interior of the Alazarin Gallery, mm. there are about four dozen people throughout, and everything from uh, respectable to extremely extravagant attire. Couples and clusters of friends that are wandering about and talking, carrying glasses of champagne and other bits of uh, liquid merriment at small tables. Some of them are in the process of meeting, some of them are uh, discussing various art pieces, and you can see on display there are dozens and dozens of incredible, odd pieces of art. You can see representations of surrealist to harsh, brutalist architecture. Not too different from some of the pieces you saw within the uh, abode you had just left, but you can see there are heavy, towering archways that seem to come to angular apexes, where there is just a perpetual push of shadow that tends to spin as it vanishes. You can see uh, long, leafless, uh, petrified trees wrapping around the exterior of extensive pillars that seem to vanish into the horizon. You can see clambering stairs, almost in an M.C. Escher display that seem to defy geometry, and in times you swear you can see eyes and faces amongst the distant shadow, and it kind of gives this unique, uh, unsettling, macabre sense to the surrounding light and laughter and conversation as people begin to discuss and whisper about what feelings it evokes, what mysteries it draws from their imagination. And a number of historians, uh, one in particular that you recognize uh, in this space to be Professor Errol Dennings, oh, yes. who is the professor of uh, <laughs> Halen, Halen history, is currently walking about uh, with a very young woman on his arm and like a, a long dark dress, long straight blonde hair. Do I recognize her as a TA? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's an ex student. Uh, <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, the room is yours. Do we see Kara here? You do not see Kara here. I can make that. I can make that. <laughs> Scribbles. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been thinking about what she described, the, about how Eddie was taken, and your question about the red hand, and I'm looking around at this art and the artifacts, and I, I'd i like to pull you aside and say, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question. Mm. The Red Hand is, uh, is an organization not unlike ours, but with completely different motives. If your Eddie had any dealings with the Red Hand, it's possible his disappearance was not entirely an accident. Oh. Just like I'd like to find the woman we're looking for today for him, I'd like to find your Eddie for you. And that might involve us getting involved with some people who are Dangerous. But I'll be here with you. Thank I'll you, be. Charlie. He's been missing for quite a while. Well. As well as his entire family. As well as his staff. Ah. But yes, I, I believe there were powerful people involved. It, it was swept under the rug. Let's unearth that rug, shall we? At another time. Um. Do we see Dorna? Because I now, with all of these things coming out, I want to know, I want, I want to see Dorna. All right, you glance around the room. I'd say go ahead and make a survey. Survey test for me, if you don't mind. To look throughout the interior of the chamber, to look for somebody that you might even perceive to be the curator of this event. You do not know what Dorna looks like. I don't realize which ones these are. Uh, oh, was it the two or was it the four? four? Oh, fuck me. Oh, sorry, that's, I shouldn't curse. Um, yeah, it's not? fine, it's I'm our channel. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I if that was a problem, we would have been wrecked a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. Um, re-roll it, re-roll re it. Re -roll it. Uh, if it was that four, I don't want that four. Oh, five on the Gilded Die. 
Okay, so that's still a mixed, mixed success. I'm gonna get my drive back. So, uh, you glance around the room and looking through the crowd, seeing the, the absolute lack of concern for the troubles of the city of New Fair on some of these elite faces, some of these individuals that you, you actively kind of sometimes provide them comfort for their money, but also at times uh, lament their exploitation mm. of the structures that they sit atop. Um, that sense of conflict sits within you that you've once experienced even just this day. And in that, that kind of that pain in the heart kicks in. You do take a brain. Um, as as the, the stress of the ethical conflict can, begins to swim deep within your mind, and then you force it out and glance out across the crowd, and you see there is a woman, uh, about six foot, with long black hair that comes just past the shoulders, that comes into these kind of curls at the end. Uh, is wearing a deep red, like scarlet dress that goes all the way up to her neck and is semi sheer past the shoulders before it turns into a solid dress all the way down and just drags about a foot and a half behind her. Um, the dress ends at the shoulders and then long gloves begin down, like opera house style gloves come to the point there. You see rings on her hands, uh, jewelry around her neck and her ears. Um, uh, kind of a, a smooth brown skin, wonderful makeup, uh, and she holds a single champagne glass in her hand, and you watch as she is gesturing to different pieces and explaining to uh, one of the groups around the the finer points and reasonings for these chosen pieces. Mm. And you immediately tell from other people that are listening in and paying the attention that she is likely the curator for this event. Mm -hmm. um. Just a, a quick scan around. Are any of the um, items that are on display? I know we have paintings. Are there any of the items on display jewels of any kind? Mm -hmm. On display, no jewels. You see mainly paintings. There are a couple of uh, looks like pieces of broken stone, and at a glance you can see there's sections of statues. It looks like they are recovered artifacts or sculptures that are replicating or giving the the image of historical artifacts. Um, you're not sure if they're legitimate or if they're just recreations for the purposes of the atmosphere of the exhibit. I feel that we need to talk to her, but I'm not sure the angle. I can always put on my badge and say, you know, I'm um, captain here, and <laughs> I believe in your power. I, I believe in your powers of deception, <laughs> my dear. But even you have limits. I know it's true. It's true. Doesn't make sense. Uh, the jewelry she's wearing. Mm -hmm. What's she wearing? Uh, whatever she's wearing, it looks to be a series of a small, like sapphire-like beads. Five of them that are set into this like beautiful golden neck piece. That's actually like a solid band of multiple chains that kind of cross between. Um, it's almost like a small mantle that sits upon the top of her dress. Mm -hmm. um. Duh! Do I see? Um, do I see Eliza here, Farrington? Uh, I would say you do not see Eliza. Okay. Here. Eliza! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> there's no time like the present, right? Uh, I'd like to just walk up and join the crowd listening to her. And. Anyone else doing anything while you're doing it? Oh, you're following? Just gonna okay. Get in the crowd and just listen to what she's talking about. Okay. Uh, as you begin to approach, she points out. This piece here is representative of the deep annals of lost knowledge. For those that once upheld this entire society, through their own arrogance, vanished and fell to their inability to see the limits of their ambition. And let this be a lesson to all of us to guard our own limits and be well aware of how high we should climb. And some of the folk in the crowd are like, <laughs> and guys like, that's a fancy idea. That sounds like very um, <laughs> common thought. Um, but it is fascinating to look at. I 
it, it, it kind of has a, a nightmarish feel to it. Well, yes, there was lots that the uh, old Ferens uh, constructed their day-to-day -day interests and beliefs around, their faiths uh, within themselves and their capabilities, that itself borrowed um, visions, visions of all sorts of things. And she looks back at the individual and says, visions of what eventually wiped them out. And she kind of smiles a bit. The gentleman kind of shrinks down a bit. Well, that certainly, yeah, that's, that's, I'll take one, I'll take that one. <laughs> they all kind of clap around a bit. And... Um, is, is she very much holding court? Is there any way to like? She, she was holding court for that conversation, and then when the man says he's going to buy something, she sends like another assistant over to go ahead and like close the deal with him. Mm -hmm. She goes over and shakes his hand, um, and then turns uh, to another figure. Excuse me, mm. Charlotte. Uh, I'm I'm very interested in this uh, old Farron history that you speak of. I am intrigued to see you come to our establishment, Charlotte. I am aware of you, and uh, I've not seen you within a fine gallery before. No, I've I've been taking an interest in the arts much more lately. Uh, music. Paintings, even fine jewelry and stones, um, pottery, uh, really whatever I can take in from, from the culture in our city. And I am intrigued to hear more about this uh, theory on how they were wiped out. Oh, <laughs> these are all theories that many individuals have. We have no recorded knowledge of what happened. Mm. All we have is the shaded echoes and the stories we choose to make up. And that's what this represents. Each of these is an artist's idea of what those final moments might have been. Oh. Fascinating, isn't yes, it? Yes, fascinating. So, so just to be clear, none of these items were uh, actual artifacts that were taken from anywhere. Oh no, that, that, uh, that is uh, for the college and the museum to handle. This is all. Uh, representation. Uh, I suppose if one were to be interested in procuring something uh, a little bit more special than what you have out here, what then would be the way for them to, uh, to do so with you? Make a focus test for me, oh, if you don't mind. Oi, 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 okay, in that case. Can I give you? You sure can. Uh, I'll use one. I'm going to use a drive. Okay. I'll give you a drive. And, uh, an intuition drive? Got it. Yep. Yes. And you did one too? Is that what you said? Yes, I did an intuition drive, drive as well. Drive as well. Killed it. Okay, so then I have one, two, three. That's how you count. Make sure you know which ones are you. Yes, you get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you. That is a failure. Uh, oh my gosh, we get three. our drives back. Okay. Hey, you're welcome. You hate it, huh? You get your drives back? <laughs> you hate it. You hate it. Good, good, good looking out, good looking out. Good looking out. There's something about the, there's something about the red hand that you can't recall. It's driving you nuts. And as she kind of looks towards you, as you carry this conversation on, goes, well, I'm certain there are those that could be of service. Um, perhaps the museum, or if you have an interest in these. And she's kind of looking for some no, sort of a sign. That's a good word, a sign. Uh, God, how blunt can I be? Um, yes, I don't suppose anyone would have taken anything directly from the museum or somewhere else, and they wouldn't want to be caught red-handed with something. <laughs> <laughs> that would be ridiculous. <laughs> mm. Make a sweet test <laughs> now. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> come on, come on. Don't mess with me. <laughs> I'm gonna spend do a I drive. Do I do it, do I do it, Yar? Okay, I'm gonna give you. you a drive. Come on, you guys. You were so good to me before. You can do it. You be so it. good to me again. Okay, mixed success. No, no, six! Six, six, six. Yep, sweet. Nice. Six is a success. 
she, you can see, uh, goes and puts a, a hand up like this, looking past you. And the rest of you kind of watch as two rather relatively thick looking gentlemen in suits who are approaching stop and kind of walk off a bit, but keeping a close eye. Mm. Goes, ah, of course, that would be absurd. Mm. Um, well. She kind of takes you by the arm mm. and pulls you away from the crowd and whispers in your ear, but I have some contacts that uh, have recently come into some very interesting pieces. What are you looking for? Perhaps something that could, uh, oh goodness, this is going to sound particularly vain of me. I'm looking to impress a certain gentleman friend, but he's a very knowledgeable one and takes interest in the meaning of things. I was wondering if there might be, a, I don't know, a piece of adornment or jewelry of some kind. Unfortunately, the only such piece that I've had was recently sold. Oh. But should you have interest in, let's say, a statuesque collectibles, perhaps uh, ancient writings, iconography, things of unique history. You wouldn't happen to have anything here I could take a look at, would you? Gives kind of a look to one of the gentlemen off the side. Wait here just a moment. She walks off back to her office. While that's happening, she looks over and looks at you. And her expression drops a little bit. She glances past you and heads over to the office. Did I see that? Um, you saw her like look over her shoulder for a second. You definitely see it. And a short time later, one of those coated, coat-wearing, heavy, looking, muscular individuals approaches this like jet black beard, it looks like it's been colored with ink almost. Uh, and a very, very short hair that has the widow's peak on it, kind of approaches, puts his hand on your shoulder and goes, Miss Black, I'm afraid you need to leave. And well, whatever he for? turn you and push you towards the door. Oh, I just love to look at art, is all. I understand, but you need to leave. Oh. All right. You're very tall doesn't respond, but starts ushering you out of the room. Uh, excuse me. Uh, do you, sorry ma'am, uh, where, where's, where, where's the bathroom? Looks at, <laughs> looks at you and looks at your clothing and says, you too, grabs your shoulder. Whoa, hey, Georgie, And begins Georgie, pushing Georgie. you both towards this the door. Is, no, 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 no. It's all right, it's okay. What, a, what, a, what, what? This is like, I look like this on, on purpose. You are not the clientele that Miss wishes to see and throws you out onto the street. Now and that is very unkind. Yeah, it's very unkind. It is also my job. Don't you throw me as well, sir. I would not do such a thing. And just kind of gently pushes you outside you of the front. careful of the placement of your hands. Oh, did you just touch her? Did you just touch her somewhere that you shouldn't have touched her? No, I touched her shoulder, so what? I... All right. Do I need to make a report here, ma'am? Do I need to go inside and rep and and get mad at this? It's fine. I'll Puts his arms behind his back and just leans in towards you. Come on, lean a little further. What do you want? Excuse me. <laughs> oh, hello. Uh, thank you for getting rid of this rabble. <laughs> I, I, I would love to thank uh, Dorna for the, which, which, what was your first name again? What was your name? Dagon. Thank you, Dagon. I'll, uh, I'll step outside here and have a smoke and I'll see you in a Hey, bit. screw all 
you rich people anyway. This is all hoity toity bullshit. Shh, this is not even like, real. Oh, no, how did they even get in here? I saw them earlier. I was wondering how I walked around here. People like certainly it's whispering. It's fake or... art. It's fake. I'm just gonna Please, I'll keep <laughs> move I'll, closer I'll walk to the outside office. with the. Uh, mm. I'll walk outside with the gang. Uh, well, uh, I believe that Charlie's in there doing her thing. She's still in there, right? Mm -hmm. uh, anything that we should do to lend her aid? And as I'm talking, I pull out a little notebook out of my jacket and just write the security guy's name in my jacket. Put it back in. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Um. Um. D d d did I see where they, where they walked off? Where she took her and they walked off somewhere? It's like a back office. Yeah, there's, there's a back office area, and you're currently waiting outside of it as she's in there. We could go around. Sure. I mean, maybe I'm, I'm sure the gallery is quite secured. This is a very expensive place. Um. Well, what time so. is it? It's starting to get quite late. Jesus, my God! You, you hear this heavy dick explosion. Some sort of a loud impact from the far end of the room. I everyone, just peed. everyone in the room just goes. <laughs> what? You hear it again. <laughs> Screams from inside the room as everyone goes running out the front door. Everybody in this entire gallery begins to filter out, screaming and running, pushing each other out of the way. You can see as the the, the men you were just talking to gets like pushed out into I the front of the street, knocks over. You run inside. I, and run inside too. I run as well. All right, yeah. it it is challenging, and you hear this heavily on the other side of the room. Charlie? You see the door kind of like. Poof. And you hear screams from the inside of the office, as well as what sounds like heavy bricks falling and another oh, like no. breaking and thrashing of materials. No, and give, me the, give me the give me the the, the bacon. The the, the the give it back. You oh, have two of them. There were two. Do I have it? Do I have it? Give them all. All right. I know. Just it's so in. scary. It's so scary. Come in. Um, oh god, this is crazy. But let's do it. I'm gonna start kicking the door to try to kick the door down. <laughs> Just go ahead, I need you to make a strike roll for me. I don't suck mind. at strike. Anyone want to be Where's beefy boy? Beefy boy? Beefy oh, boy? Uh, oh, it's, it's, you're it's, pushing it's, through it's the it's crowd. This is no judgment. You you're we're, we're you're, you're fighting strike. upstream as people are screaming and rushing oh, out of the room. Oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to uh, 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 strike. It's a strike, yeah. <laughs> do I sense her trepidation about trying to kick this door down? You do. And I'd say you do catch up as she's gearing herself up. May I? Yes, please. All right. I'm not good at all. Cool. Let's do it. I'll spend a drive. I'll, I'll, I'll do. Uh, I'm gonna help out, so you get an extra one, cause I'm, I'm gonna kick. Yeah. I'm gonna help. Kick We're gonna the kick door. together. Hey, yeah, let's go, great. kicking buddies. <laughs> hey, that's a five. Yes. That's a five. Mixed that success. Everything else sucked. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you kick the door, and both of you, it slams onto the inside. Just as you kind of step into the chamber, following the momentum of the kick, you see inside the office, the entire right-hand side of the wall, the wood is splintered and pushed open. A hole about eight or eight and a half feet is just open there as wood is pushed inward. There's a single uh, lantern hanging on the ceiling, almost like a, like a, a low-lit uh, oil chandelier that's like hanging and swaying as the light kind of flickers around from what you can just see is a massive shape. This shape looks like it is this what you can make out, just elements of gray, bulbous flesh with arms, many arms, and many legs, and strips of cloth and brick and materials all just been pushed into this thing. You're uncertain exactly what this is and just a little bit of light that you have, but you just hear screaming on the other end before you notice that there are multiple heads that all can sh sh Turn and look in your direction. The mouths kind of. Do they look like the people, or do they look like it? You both take a brain oh, at staring God. at this terrifying entity. Would that make oh, success? We're first in the door. Yeah. God, oh my God. Oh, make success. Oh no. At which point, immediately, <laughs> turns back and leaps out of the hole that it just bashed through the door, <laughs> taking chunks of the wood with it. You can see as it smashes through, bits of its body kind of catch the edge of the splintered wood, leaving strips of gray kind of flickering flesh, oh, no. and it begin, turns into the alley. You hear more screams from the, out, the hallway, away from beyond where you can see as people see this thing that just goes charging <laughs> down the hall, <laughs> past the alley, and out into the night can of the city. After it? If you'd like to, yeah. yeah. 
just real quick, I'm going to do a survey around. We don't see Dorna, I'm assuming. Uh, uh, do not see and Dorna do we room. see anything broken into? Anything? Anything specific that looks like he took it? Looks like there was a desk that is just shattered. There, most of the furniture has been pushed to one side from the explosion of the wall, and there is just rubble scattered around the room. Does the portal remain? Uh, the, the portal remain? Does the portal remain? <laughs> Didn't it come out of a portal of sorts? No, no not a portal. It, no, it, 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 it bashed oh, literally through the wall. Opening. A oh, I thought opening. we had a tear a metaphysical space, but it's just no, no. all in the wall. It Got just it. blasted through oh. the wall. Did, did, in the blob, did we see any like flashes of red? Uh, was not Dorna like, in the office when? Dorna was in the was office, in the but office. you didn't see Dorna. You just heard office. a scream, heard scream. Oh, okay. and then the creature okay. left out right, and then right, right. just oh cruised down the hall. Right. You do see that there's a strong smell, a strong, immediate smell of sewage. Oh! oh within okay. the room. Okay, okay. it's going down in the. Excellent. Uh, what do we do? What are you supposed to do with something like that? Uh, we chase after it. Yeah. And then what? Uh, um, I don't know. This if there's anything that looks remotely not just like shattered or whatever, I want to grab it. A, 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 even if it's a big stick, I don't care. I want to grab something that can be used as some kind of a big weapon. Like a like a like a like if there's a shattered oh, yeah. piece of wood. Or okay, whatever. yeah. You you look over at the desk and there is uh, the desk is this like interesting carved wooden desk with like these four long kind of uh, smoothed. Uh, like long legs in each corner, and as it's broken, one of them you can easily pull off, and it's like a really nice-looking bat. Excellent. Oh, but near the desk, this is this is Dorna's office. It was. Okay. Are there any like uh, logs? You know, things of like sails, mm. like books, booking, or okay. anything. It'll like take that. you a few moments to inspect, but you can do that. You want to go ahead and make a uh, survey, if you'd like to. Can anyone look for this kind of stuff? I'll do it. I, 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 I kind of want to just I'm take all, off. After. I'm already yeah, in the I'm already, already in the alley. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give you an extra drive. Okay. So you're staying behind to look through them. Uh, yeah. I hate this idea. Uh, I feel like I want to go after the thingy. I do too. I do too. Maybe we'll go after the thingy. Ah! Look, choices, 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 choices. Yeah, no, 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 All right, you're staying behind. No, 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 we got it. Gilded, Party is split. Gilded die. And, <laughs> okay, gilded die, and we. Uh, I got my drive back. Okay. Okay, okay. gilded die, and what was your only gilded die? A uh, five. A five. Great. Okay. As you're looking through the room, you like start pushing through the space, and you can see two things on the broken desk. It looks like there was a locked lower uh, shelf um, that is broken open. On the inside, you see there's a small, uh, snapped and locked like side briefcase, uh, right. as well as a pair of black gloves with red interior stitching mm -hmm. on the gloves. Mm -hmm. Take all right. that shit. Take it all. Okay, you grab all that, and as you, you like, grab that, you pull it up, you put it on, and you go to start running. And as you do, you feel this weird like tingling sensation on your arm. Oh, you no, look no, down no, no, as no, a strip no. of flesh. <gasps> That was left behind in the middle of the trouble is now trying to embed itself into my your knife. arm. I'm using my knife to well, get this. Well, you take a bleed by okay. beginning to push its way into you. You didn't notice it until it was already trying to merge with okay. your body. Okay. Uh, um, you do manage to just pull it off and oh, throw it, but how does the bleed affect you as you're trying to run um, in this dark alley? As it's going in, I feel myself almost like sucked into a memory, sucked into the past. And because we've just talked about what we talked about there, I'm standing in what looks like kind of an open field and, uh, and I'm starting to see a crack in the sky, like the sky was a painting. Mm -hmm. And feeling like a vacuum, feeling like a vacuum is sucking me towards it. And just as I start to go through it, uh, I'm snap back, so it's it's terror. It's I haven't. It's just completely discombobulating. Yeah. You, you come back and Augie, you've like watched as. Sure. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. All right. In the interim, you guys spend a little bit of time little grabbing, smashing and grabbing on the inside. Both of you are charging down after this creature. You see in the distance down the hall, people are like leaping out of the way, screaming. Some are like falling to the ground. Like losing their minds at what just whizzed past. The low fog that is filtered into the city now is obscuring part of its form, but you now know what you're looking for, and it is like slamming into walls and skidding as you see now it's running on what looks to be like seven or eight different pairs of legs. And it's just oh like, oh my <laughs> god. Some of them are like facing forward, some of them are just kind of like flicking in the air behind it, trying to go through the motions. Does it look like the limbs are all separate and they're all part of a blob, or does it look like lots of bodies shoved together? Uh, hard to tell this distance in the fog, um, but as you go charging after it, uh, who is keeping tabs on trying to follow its path? Um, uh, that's probably you. Yeah. Are either of us good at this? And yes, you should. That's a tracking. Yeah, thing, yeah, so absolutely. You should do that. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm sprinting after it uh, and uh, and 
seeing if I can see where it's going. Okay, I'd like you to make a survey test I to will go ahead add, and continue to follow it down. I'll add an you intuition get, drive for you. You're going to give me one? Yeah. Is that an extra dice for me? Yes, it is. All right, and that's sur- <laughs> it's survey? survey. I'm good. I'm bad. Uh, <laughs> that, that is a fail. That is a fail. Uh, two, two, two and two threes. Okay, you see it like dart down an alley. Uh, and it like squeezes in the small area, passing you, and like that's exactly where it's going. And you run and you turn the corner, and just as you do, you watch as it's turned, it's stopped and turned right there, waiting for you. Right as you turn the corner and spin, you see this mass of like seven or eight arms in front of you, and you see multiple heads staring at you. Two heads in particular that are facing each other that kind of turn and face that's, you that's, a woman's head and a man's head as they both pull apart their bodies like a mouth. And you can see their torsos facing each other, like they were locked in the process of making love, and they're where their waists are, their hips are fused. And out of their bodies, these teeth have grown beyond Whoa! their torsos and chest to form a Matt! massive crocodile-like mouth of flesh. That as they both disgusting. go, <sighs> and it reaches out to try and grab and pull you Whoa. into its mouth. The arms grab you and begin dragging you in. You watch as Howard is now being pulled Howard. into its mouth. You take a body as it begins to like pull you across the teeth and the weird jagged parts of its like extended fingers are. Punch it! Let us get punch it! Let us get punch it, it. Punch punch it. Punch it in the faces! <laughs> you took a moment. We we'll get there in a second. <laughs> so, what are you doing? Uh, am I restrained in any way? Uh, you're not restrained, but you're certainly being hurt. I'm being pulled and hurt and I'm taking a body. Uh, what, did you scream, punch it? Punch it! All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to reach it, but put it? my knife. No, no, I'm good doing it. Okay, I'll good. pull my pocket out. I take the little vial out as carefully as I can. <laughs> and, as uh, you're being like Audrey Tude into its mouth. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to do my Howard, best to quickly sprinkle punch half punch the <laughs> vial, half the vial onto my knuckies. I will say, I will say, <laughs> Given the circumstances, oh, the you can't be that careful to do just half the vial. The vial is used, but nevertheless, you sprinkle it under your that, knuckles. Yeah, give me like two seconds. <laughs> uh, well, as thoughtful as I am, I will splash it just on there. Yeah, yeah, it's just a smeary thing full of smear. All right, go ahead and make a strike check for me. Sure. Am I doing a punch? Give him all the drive. Uh, uh, no, I have I one. I, get, I got I'm, one left. This I'm going to you know, give you another one. You're going to help me get moral yes. support? Yes. All right. Punch it. <laughs> I'm gonna pick up the rock and throw it at the same time while I'm distracted. All right, I got three. Come on, baby, come on! Unbelievable. No, you it's failed. what I'm supposed to be good at. Three threes. Oh, thanks for giving my pride. Three threes. I will reach back and, out of stress, take the big old, biggest haymaker, even though I know that's the worst punch you can punch. And what happens to me? <laughs> One of the hands. One of the many arms that are lining the outside of this awful flesh amalgam creature snatches your wrist. Uh, the 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 knuckles unused, but grabbed in place as another face kind of like emerges and goes into you, and you take another brain. Another brain? Oh boy! Uh oh! Uh oh! Is that your third? Uh, my mind snaps. Absolutely beyond the realm of comprehension, and I believe I'm out. You're out. You're out for this was scene right now. <gasps> but that was your fourth. That's, That's it, baby. Third. I'm gonna have a no, scar. But three, no, but I'm, three. You, you take it on that, the fourth, right? That you just took it. Was the fourth. my fourth. <gasps> That's a scar at the end of the night for you, boy. If I'm still alive, uh, you uh, nerds, help me! <laughs> right, 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 right. At the end of the He's scene, right, at the right, very right. least, uh, oh, both of you God. just rush around the corner as you see uh, Arlo throwing a rock and then draw back. And as you turn, you see this massive, terrifying creature. The multitudes of limbs twitching, multiple heads kind of going <laughs> all together. And as you turn on the corner, you see it kind of sees the rest of you swarm. And you can now notice that it's clutching on the side, partially like pushed into the side, the bright red dress mm-hmm. of Dorna, who is like, ah, help me, somebody! At oh. which point, other people start shouting, help, help, and other people start yelling in the road. The creature like, <laughs> it spits you out as you start freaking losing your mind and then darts down. Did Dorna, was Dorna taken too, or is she still stuck Dorna's there? taken too. Oh, oh, just go. I, I wanna, I wanna, I'm going after it, because I have the suitcase, and I have the gloves, and I have a crazy Hail Mary thing, and I, I'm sorry, I, I'm just running Howard, after. Howard, Howard, snap, snap. Catatonic. 
I'm gonna. God damn it! I'm gonna oh. take Howard Howard's arm, and I'm just as we're going. I'm just gonna try to just carry him. Okay. Is there a car around? You're 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 in the roads between the different buildings here, just off the main road of the Varnish. You can try and go to the Varnish if you want. You're just no, running after it. I'm running after it, and uh, yeah, I'm running after it, and and as as I'm running, I'm putting on these gloves. Okay. So you go ahead and put the gloves on. Mm -hmm. You continue to to dash directly, following it, and it is fast. Mm -hmm. It's like, shh, shh, shh. And you can see it's like running up the wall for a second before it like slams back down and slides for a second from its own viscosity before it gets back up on its multitude of legs that are all at different angles trying to get a grip as it pushes its way forward, until eventually it turns into like a large alley opening. There's there's kind of a, 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 a kind of like a breath between the alleys where you can see there's a big. Uh, drain grate and what looks to be a, a sewer entrance way mm -hmm. as it immediately rushes over on top of it and flings the top of the sewer grate, swing, ping, ping, up into the air as it begins to push its way down. Uh, 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 oh god, suitcase or flash powder. Does anybody have any toilet paper? Uh, uh. <laughs> can I open this briefcase? Can I open it? Can I, can I get it open? Yeah, you go ahead and like, Open the briefcase, uh, looking inside, you can see there are a number of small uh, obsidian-like shards that are about an inch and a half long. It looks like they're set uh, in, intently in a row, but they're all different shapes, like they're all just naturally pulled, like like these weird obsidian nails, mm -hmm. I guess you could say. Um, I don't know what the no. F I'm doing. Um, I have the gloves on. Uh, I'm gonna grab what, like a handful of them and just <gasps> no! throw it at him. Okay, oh. I need you to go ahead and make a strike. Right, oh, so with a strike throw, I am going to use, because I have that <laughs> cool under pressure, which this is pressure, uh, I'm going to use my cunning drive to get a drive. Uh, and do I have, I don't have a resistance. Uh, nobody can help me because no one's with me, right? Nope. Jeez. I don't have enough. Oh wait, I can also use this drive. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm just gonna use this drive as well. Okay. And don't be a dick. Oh, no, 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 that doesn't count. Five. Five, that's a success. Okay, you throw them as hard as you can, and as the creature is beginning to like pull its way down, you can see like the opening to the sewer is a little bit smaller than its weird oblong torso like <laughs> mass and it's having to like squeeze through as you throw them they all stick into the side of the flesh and seem to vanish beneath it and all the heads suddenly <laughs> scream out in some sort of pain or agony in unison at once as it does you can see where they enter the flesh seems to darken slightly and as it opens its mouth angrily, you can see the two bodies of the two lovers that form the large alligator-like mouth screaming as well, the teeth opening. You see the glittering of a, a greenish emerald that still sits mm -hmm. upon mm -hmm. the front of her chest before it angrily oh. turns around and la like lashes over in your direction with multiple arms that scrape. And as it do, you get thrown woof, into the wall and take a heavy body hit. As you crumple down, your bell is rung. Mm -hmm. You also take a bleed. Wow. As you uh, kind of, this is your first time really hitting and encountering this entity, uh, and as you kind of try and come to for a moment, blinking your eyes and catch your breath for a moment, you hear the final <laughs> as you glance over where it was, and it is no longer present, the opening to the sewer below, as the rest of you manage to catch up. <laughs> It went, it's, the nails, they heard it, it's, it's gone. She's gone. Well, we have to go down into the sewer. What? Well, it, it'll come back out, it'll, it'll keep attacking. She's right. She's right. Is Are there any of the weird little gray fleshy things on the ground as it tried to get into the sewer? You do see there are maybe two or three of them that are twitching on the outside of the sewer entrance where it pushed itself through. It seems to be losing bits of its mass when it Skating catches on through. something. Yeah, do the, the bits seem to be thrashing more 
now than they were like when we first saw the bits at the other place? They are like curling and thrashing, freshly. Freshly. <laughs> but it's not that like if we take one of the vials out, are are they thrashing more now or are they thrashing By less? Being you take a moment yeah. to examine and compare. The one that's the vial is still like its occasional twitch. So it seems like it's just the the immediacy the fresher, of them yeah. being shed is okay. showing more vibrance. Okay. Hey, maybe poke it with one of those things. Yeah. Poke the poke I'd, the pieces. I'd, yeah, with one of the obsidian pieces. Okay. So with see my, if it does with any my glove on. I'm gonna I'm gonna poke one of the thingies with the glove on. Like with the nail with one of the obsidian nails. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna poke one of the okay. gooey pieces. Go ahead and poke it, and you hear like a sizzling sound, and you see it like bend and flex and flex, and as you pull the stone away, the point where the stone was has now eroded, like it melted upon contact, but the strip of flesh begins to come to rest. Does it look like in any way, I know they're like shards, but does it look like in any way they can be fixed to this glove with, like do they fit into the glove as nails at all? No, the gloves just look like gloves. They're just, okay. I just but the to... nails do seem to have some sort of yes. property that interacts um, with the flesh. Is it possible to The bleed damage that I took earlier from touching Mr. Ferris's hand. Mm -hmm. Can I look at one of the little gray bits and put my hand near it and let them in? If you'd like to. Take knowledge from taking bleed from that thing? Okay. I'll say I'll say yes. Um, in kind of focusing on the the earlier sensation of this corruption, and now looking at a source of this sort of similar corruption, uh, you suddenly feel this hunger once again in your stomach. This awful, terrible hunger. This ancient, undying hunger. This being older than anything you've seen or known that just wants to eat and become everything, and then was broken into many, many pieces and forgotten. Am I allowed to ask a question about it? Yeah. Does anything scare me? Can I sense a fear in it from anything? The entity, no. But you do sense that whatever this creature is that is been born from its hunger and corruption is extremely scared. Mm. Mm. I have to go after it. Yeah. It's about it's... now, Howard, you begin to regain your composure. You can decide right now what your scar is oh, and how your points change. I have. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. Howard comes to, looks about, doesn't say a word to any of his friends, and he pulls his uh, little kit out of his jacket, it's his laboratory equipment, and he just sits it on his lap, and he removes his scalpel, and he removes his hat, and he makes a small incision in the top of his own head, about three inches or so wide, parts it with his fingers, <gasps> Sets it back down. He pulls out a small handsaw uh, with a crank, like a drill. It's got a circular drill bit in it. And he puts it on the top of his skull and just begins to crank. Howard. And crank. Howard, Howard. What's he doing? What's he doing? And Is crank. Anything? Howard, oh, of and you course sort of, it's not. You sort of smell that powder, that earthy powder of bone mixed with blood. What and then you just hear a. <laughs> and a tiny piece of his skull comes out, and he puts it inside of his surgery equipment, blinks his eye, squeezes his skin back together, it's bleeding pretty good, puts his hat back on, and says, oh, well, sometimes you just have to expand your mind. And then uh, he's gonna lose uh, some focus for inspect and analysis, mm -hmm. and get his first ever point into sense, which is a mm. tune, channel, and reveal. Mm. <laughs> and he just gave himself his own hand pan in his skull. 
That's fucking cool. That's fucking rad. That was cool. <laughs> That's a scar. That is. That's a bit of a scar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, I'm not saying that. We're in a horror show, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Holy, God. he's cool. All right. Rod. <sighs> yes. So that happened. Uh. An ancient These... cultural tradition. It's been around for millennia. I never thought I'd try it myself, but it just feel... <laughs> it was in the moment. <sighs> What's happening? Arlo, what did you... What did you... What, what, what there did is you learn? so much going on yeah, in yeah, this very we, moment. We don't have time to get the... We, we have to go... To go catch it. me up. Give me the book jacket. We have to go into the sewer. Okay. The creature went down into the sewer. All right. It's very scared, as am okay. I. Um... And it's hungry. It's always hungry. Is there any way for us to sate its hunger? For us to stop it? For us to save it? For us to do something to it? How do you feed a beast? Wait, what's the music thing? Do we need any music? Should we be playing God, some music maybe or something? Maybe we should try to play Bring maybe to the, the music was a... Music calms the savage beast. <laughs> you ever heard a that one? Threat. Uh oh. Uh... I'm gonna go down to the sewer. I'm following her. Okay. I avoid the gray flesh. Yes, likewise. Okay. You climb down into the darker subterranean space beneath New Fair. The scent of refuse and rot and earthen mold catches your sinuses as you step down into the damp, damp, dark. Do you know which direction it went? As it goes in two different ways. Can we smell more? Any... Oh yes, follow the bleed. Oh, yeah. As you go ahead and place the bleed detector into a gathering order, you look around and can see indeed there are streaks of corruption and bleed across the sides of the walls and you know precisely the direction it went. Do we have a plan as we're following? We have nothing. Then what the fuck did we come down to the sewer for? We Do have we this. This obsidian has some effect on it, but I don't think that it's, uh... We know it came from that emerald. And... Is there anything else in this case, briefcase thingy? No, it's... Did you... Uh, I, I will say as you look at them, you based on how it's affected flesh, uh, you've only worn the gloves when holding them. You're uncertain if it just affects dead flesh or any flesh, so you probably get the sense that you should probably keep the gloves on. Yeah. But that's all you see. Um, did you see the emerald? I did. It's still inside of the creature? Yes. Maybe if we can damage the emerald, the creature will no longer be able to, um, Accumulate. We, we can try. What other weapons do we have on us? He's got a. F I got a. I. I. Okay. So you can choose your gear. Yes. In the moment. Mm -hmm. I do have, as a possibility, a hand weapon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as you don't have all three of your objects for the assignment no, filled. No. I have a hand weapon, and I'm. Maybe, maybe, maybe I got it from from the captain. Mm -hmm. Okay, what'd you pull from the captain? A gun. All right, you got you got the got the. <laughs> you, exactly. I was hoping someone had it. Say it out loud. I was hoping someone had it. <laughs> you got you got the periphery captain's handgun. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. and Excellent. now that I have seen this creature up close and personal, I'm going to take out my occult text. <laughs> And look through it and see if I can find any, any research, any knowledge about a creature with this description from ancient times. Uh, I would like you to go ahead and roll focus to see if you can uh, go through this book to find something that could be specific to this. Uh, I think I could be able to help on this one. Sure, sure. Okay. I'll give you one. Thank you. Spend a drive. All right, that gives me four because I spent a drive as well. Oh. I'm going to use my resistance no to re-roll. 
that. You guys are rolling. Rolling real poor. Yeah. I lost three sixes at one point. Yeah. We, did, we did have lucky you moments. You, you used you it all up. <laughs> To save your man. A four. A mixed a four. Oh. success. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> you Jeez. go through the book and quickly scanning oh, and you- But we shared trauma. We got one of our resistances that we used red. If you failed. Which I did, and then I used resistance. Oh, but, but then they made the roll success. Fuck. Oh. But good looking out. <laughs> the final roll. Okay. <laughs> um, You've read through this book many times. You spent a lot of time in your room, especially since everything happened with your fiance. Uh, you recall there's like something weird about this. Um, there is a, an old Farron myth that uh, to punish those who were the most heinous of criminals in Old Fair, they would bind them to a shard of Gredon. Gredon was only referred to as a demon of endless hunger. And what worse than binding a criminal to a space imprisoned where they could not eat and could not be free when all they wanted than anything else was to devour and grow. That's what you find. Okay. Okay. But you do know that these shards were what were affixed to these Prisoners. I bet that's the emerald. Then what are these of uh, these? The, the flesh eating shards of dark <laughs> something? I don't know. Well, they obviously have some effect on the creature, so we have to use them wisely. Mm -hmm. But they don't seem to kill it, per se. Which, how many did you throw, by the way? You said you threw a few at it. Three. Uh, she said three. She said three. So we have, uh, you said how many were there? Five, so you have two left. Oh, fuck. Well, maybe it starts an infection. You know, maybe, maybe it's, maybe when we happen upon it, it's gonna, it's gonna be dead. Maybe if you get it directly in the, the mouth of the creature. Uh, I was thinking, I was originally gonna just throw the briefcase in its mouth, but I didn't get there in time. Right. Um, well, we have these. Don't anyone else touch them. All right. Okay. Following the path of bleed with the detector before you, you trudge down the descending sewer tunnels, curving to the left and further down until you begin to hear screams, but screams in unison, a half dozen or more mouths speaking in once, slightly offset from each other. Sara, stop it! Give it to stop! Stop this! Free us! As you come to the edge, you see the tunnel stops, and the uh, rainwater of the recent storms that's still kind of draining from the upper parts of the city kind of flows down into an open, connecting antechamber where multiple of these tunnels descend and join this large cylindrical space about 80 or so feet across. And here in the center of it, you can just barely see with what little light you may be able to bring, or the grate above, about 100 feet at the top of this chamber, uh, a little bit of street light coming through, you can see the massive shape, all heads shouting as it's holding Dorna in its arms, as she is like slowly being pressed into it. She's screaming and fighting and saying, I, I don't know, I'm just a dealer for Lycus. I, look, just let me go. I'm but a low, low member on the whole of that. Just let me go, please. And they're just start pulling it, just screaming at her. Save her. Uh, yeah. Is I? Sorry, go ahead. No, go. You go ahead. I have an idea. What if? What if I start singing? That's exactly. Yeah, what I was thinking. I think too. that's a good idea. That's. My but story. we should do it now before Let's she's the devoured. Eaten. Okay. Happy birthday yes, to you, 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 of all songs. 
Happy birthday. It's the only one I think would make sense for this time. I don't understand this at all. Good day to you. you. Just gonna start Happy walking. Birthday. Happy birthday. It whips around in space, and you can see now Dorna up to her like waist is like now like pushed into the body. She kind of falls limp, looking confused and disheveled. All the heads look in your direction. They're charging towards you, rushing up the side and beginning to climb up to the front. What are you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm throwing the other two shards. No, uh, in the mouth, in the mouth, in the mouth. In the mouth, this is a very high stakes roll. I need your roll strike for this. I'm gonna use what is it? All my cunning. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assist you with my last Actually, this, this would be, I say strike or control, your choice. Uh, okay. Strike is the is the impact of it, the, the like the okay. the focus so of it. But control is more about finesse, and you are if you're going for the mouth. This would be actually this would be more control. Okay, so I'm, 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 I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you a drive as well. One, time to spend two, three. Oh my god, I have no drives. Four. No. Is that all the stuff that I have? Come on, baby. Four. <gasps> Four. Great. That's a mixed success. <laughs> How are we rolling so loud? As it begins to, this is rough, y'all. It begins to climb up, and you can hear the shrieking of all the heads in unison. Their eyes almost uh, reflecting the faint bits of light in the shadow here as it scurries up at the top, reaching for you. You throw them into the middle of the mouth. The two, and it just shrieks in pain. Super loud. It echoes through the chamber. You can hear voices up from above starting to like question, "What did you hear that?" Um, echoing down from below, as it kind of pulls back, and as it does, it grabs your leg and pulls you with it and throws you across the room. You just get flung about 25 feet, oh <laughs> taking in a body. Yeah, I'm out. Oh, no. You're out. I'm out, that was my fourth body. You watch as Charlotte gets thrown, hits the side of one of the heavy pipes of, of the sewer, and just lies low. Charlie! Charlie! <laughs> was there only one way into this chamber? From where you are now, yeah, the, the, the tunnel comes down and then opens into the chambers. Right. And, and there are other entrances around. There are other entrances. You just don't know where they're coming from. Oh, okay. Oh, God. Oh. The creature's still writhing, screaming, and yeah, all Yeah, it's pulling back. It's pulled back into the chamber now. It's like back on the ground, and it's, right, it's like the weird alligator like mouth of the two lovers' bodies is like. Can ah, we see the emerald ah, when it opens it, its mouth? What's up? Can we see the emerald when it opens its mouth at all? You. Certainly, can occasionally see a glimmer. You knowing where it is, and knowing where she's the upper part of the she's the upper body of the mouth. So when it pulls open, you can see on the uh, clavicle the glitter of the green emerald. I'm gonna try to shoot it. Yeah. I'm gonna try to shoot it. All right. As it's writhing back, shrieking, you go ahead and take that policeman's that 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 preferman's uh, weapon and take an aim. This is gonna be a finesse or control. Uh, which is your finesse type roll. So we got, we got, we got, okay, I got a guilt. I got, I'm gonna use my last drive. So that's another, that's, Charlie. anyone wanna help him? I don't I, have anything I'm to give. saving one drive in case it doesn't <laughs> keep it, work. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Because we, we Wait, just glassed so I, I'm rolling, it, it didn't work. I'm having a brain fart. I'm rolling with three? You have I believe two in and you one though. is gilded, one plus is you've used a drive, then and three. I use a drive, okay. It certainly put her on its back foot. Whatever so you, you should did only have to three it. dice yeah. that you're rolling. Yeah. Okay. And you can One see two. now, like, as it's backing up, uh, the like an arm kind of yes. falls off oh, the side oh, of it. Oh, oh, five. five. That's a success. That's good. So you go ahead and fire. You watch as the emerald suddenly <gasps> shatters across the torso. Oh. All the heads scream, and as the mouth clamps shut. It charges towards you and gets up into the chamber, filling the entryway of this. As you begin to back away, holding the gun, you instinctively try to fire a second time into it. It doesn't seem to bother it as the arms reach out and grab you and begin to pull you into its body. No, no! You take a bleed. And as you pull on it, what are you doing? I'm going to run forward and try to grab a hold of Augie. Okay, you go ahead and grab onto Augie, who's now like being pulled in the mouth like you were earlier, but now now it doesn't feel cornered. Now it feels, well, no, now it feels more cornered than ever, and it's panicking. I, 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 I feel like we gotta like lock this thing away oh. uh, 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 and let it starve. Uh, oh, God. But, uh, I'm gonna, can we at least we gotta save Augie first. You, you pull on Augie, I'm gonna try something else. Okay. A pull, a pull. I'm just trying to push and kick my way out and just try to try to just help. 
Okay, so you're, you're, you're trying to do a move? It's, yeah. It's a move roll to try and squeeze free from its mouth at the moment. Unless, what are you all doing? You, you just did an action, so what are you guys trying to so do? If, so you're pulling yourself out? I'm gonna try. I'm trying to push and I'm trying to, to, to help in some kind of way. Well, what are you two doing in, in the interim? I'm removing my glove. Okay. okay. Oh, oh gosh. What are you doing? I'm gonna look at my hand, and I'm gonna start oh, no. drawing some runes in the dust on the ground in the sewer on the cement, and I'm gonna slam my hand down onto it. Okay. And I'm gonna try to change the environment. Okay, this is. This is mean? forbidden ritual. Forbidden ritual. What is it? What is it? What's the forbidden what ritual? What's it, what's it do? What's it mean? What do I'm mean? trying to shoot up some pillars in front of it. Okay. To trap it in. As you slam your hand down, the runes that you cool. carved into the ground or drawn to the ground suddenly <laughs> glow up in a circle around your hand, and you feel like your arm is sinking in because it is. Your hand is now sinking into the ground. The ground is almost stretching as you push down, and your arm is like pushing into the matter. You're all watching as Arlo is like slowly pulling into it, like the ground is bending around. And as it's bending, you watch as the surrounding space, of the, in, the, the just the entry weight of this tunnel from the chamber from behind begins to push inward, almost like it's extending and pinching and holding the creature in place. It's actually closing in and holding it there. As this is being done, it's being pushed. And so at this point, you notice that its body is starting to fall apart. The limbs and bodies are coming loose. The whatever magic was holding this creature together, no longer tethered to this realm and broken by a bullet, it is slowly falling apart. As you pull out of the mouth and begin to back away, it's trying to pursue you with its last bits of strength, but it is held in place by this tunnel. It is unable to escape. And then as another piece of its body pulls off of it, like large chunks, whole half bodies, and multiple limbs are being left behind to try and give it more room to pursue you, the tunnel closes in again and holds it in place as you focus, falling deeper and deeper into this, this drawing funnel beneath. Your vision begins to blur as you're just now concentrating on closing, closing this tunnel. You pull away just enough to where it slows further, pulls itself, loses a few more limbs and body parts, it closes in tighter, and it's, it's, it's fighting the slowly closing uh, merry melodies, <laughs> like, oh. or keeping closer around it, until eventually it's just the two lovers left. As the arms reach out, both heads facing opposite directions kind of fold out towards you. And they look sad and scared. And they both look at each other. And you hear Onet's voice independently say, I'm so sorry, to the face of Waylon. And they both just collapse there in the middle of this tunnel. And this tiny, crushed tunnel has all the skin begins to just melt away. You draw your hand back and it's just solid ground, like it was illusion, like a thing that didn't happen. But the rest of you definitely saw, oh, except for Charlotte, the rest of you definitely saw that. I run over to Charlotte. Uh, you can't, the tunnel is closed off. Oh. Actually, there's just enough space now where the two bodies were, you could probably squeeze through. Okay. That's, there's, it's, it's now like pinched this like small hole about this big. And you just manage to like crawl through, and you rush over to Charlotte. She's unconscious. Okay, I pick her up, put her over my shoulder, and I try to start getting out. Okay. Is there a, is there a ladder up to that street? <clears throat> up to on the, the opposite sewer? side of the room, there is indeed a ladder that clambers up to a small walkway that encircles just underneath where that. Uh, that exit grate is. Let's go. Okay. And I'll uh, I'll help Augie. Okay. Care, care lift her, okay. lift Charlie up. All right. Hello. Are you okay? Um. Uh. 
Arlo goes to stand and immediately falls to her knees. Uh, oh my God, yeah, I'll set it down. I'll run down and help put an arm under Arlo. Thank you. Yeah. Come on. It's been a heck of a night. I'll start helping her up the steps. Okay. Slowly, you clamber back up, push the grate aside, and emerge the final ladder to get back to street level, covered in grime, blood, whatever else, as you see about a dozen or so bystanders in the street kind of back up. Some of the well-dressed varnish out and abouts, all looking aghast at what they see step from the sewers below as a few other folks kind of like turn their nose away from the smell. There's an immediate sense of judgment from some, as well as just general confusion and awe. Uh, one of them, this kind of older-looking businessman who has his hair parted in the center and kind of greased at the sides with a mustache, walks up. Uh, I, I do ask, what, 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 what was the commotion down there? What, what, what were you all doing? Gas leak. Right, right, and all that. Um, it's been a problem around these parts here. <clears throat> oh, and he kind of covers his nose with a sc scarf, and everyone else begins to like give you wider berth. Keep walking, keep walking. Someone goes like, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go get the periphery. No, 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 it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. We're, we're, we're... Um, Arlo looks down at her arm, and the gray that had stopped here before has traveled all the way up her shoulder and is bleeding up onto her neck. Mm -hmm. She takes an immediate bleed scar from doing the ritual. Right, okay. And you're moving what point to which? Uh, balls. She is going to lose a point in sway because she's even less. <laughs> it's valid. Able to talk to people now, and she's going to take another in sense. So her sense is now three. Yeah. Great. Um, are we close to the Gilded Rainbow? Uh, you are, are we not yet? that far. Yeah, it's in the varnish, so it's a, it's a, it's a, once you kind of gather your bearings, because now that you come up through the sewer, you, want, you weren't quite sure where in the city you were for a minute, but then you find a few familiar streets and head over to the Gilded Rainbow, uh, heading into the bookstore, closing the doors behind. Uh, Reggie's immediately just like, my, my goodness, what? Get a doctor, what? please, get a doctor, please. Right, no, of course, I'll, I'll fetch a doctor immediately. Uh, throws his coat on and rushes out the door. I set Charlotte down on the bed. Oh, Charlie. I cover her up. It takes about another 15 or so minutes before you begin to regain consciousness, Charlotte. But the first thing you do see, a welcoming sight, are the faces of individuals you call friends looking upon you with concern. Did we do it? Is anyone else alive? Dorna, did she make it? I don't remember. Huh. Um, do we remember everyone but her? Because do we remember? Go ahead and make a focus test for me. <laughs> Should I make a focus too? To, to see if we were. No, nah, you were predisposed. The only person that wasn't immediately focused on the chaos at the moment was you. Things are still a little fuzzy. <laughs> That's a three. <laughs> it's at this moment you realize nobody had eyes on Dorna. She may very well have melted with this terrifying, tragic creature and all that came together to make it. Or she may be out there still. Who knows? Maybe time will tell. I go to try to get up, and I realize that my 
my arm is completely out of its socket. Um, and I think my scar ends up being that this arm is, it doesn't have function really anymore. So I am going to take, uh, is that, uh, in terms of a, a scar, like is that about the right size or can I mitigate that a little bit? That, like <laughs> half her arm doesn't work or forearm doesn't work? As my mom used to say, choose your own punishment. Right, thanks mom. Well if I get to choose my own, uh, then it's her, her hand is dislocated and so she doesn't have the left, the right hand, but she has the arm. Okay, and how is that, how is that presented within uh, the change of? I'm going to take away a move. Okay. Oh. Uh, and I will add it to, Because she doesn't have the reflexes that she had before, I'd like to add it to survey. Is that it? Because she'd be keeping her eyes out for more danger. Sure. At any moment. All righty. Eventually, Reggie brings back a medical professional who comes and helps see to your injuries best that she can. But you've sustained a, a lifelong injury moderate as it is, thankfully, compared to others that could have been possible. Not long into your evening's scattered rest, your light keeper comes in a bit of a huff, closing the door as Alexandra can stop slowly and closes the door behind her. Um, you all look like you've a little the worse for wear this evening. <laughs> <laughs> we got our asses kicked. Uh, and how much danger still exists out there? From this beast? I don't know that there's any. We do have, uh, I use my other hand to reach and get the Bleed containment vial. We do have some samples of what it was before we, before they vanquished it. And I pull out my text. It was this creature. She takes the book for a moment and I recall this. I've not encountered anything adjacent to it, so that's unique and a bit frightful. We can also be sure that, um, and I realize I still have that fucking red hand gloves on. Mm. We can also be sure that these, these folks are the ones who released it. She grabs them and kind of holds them and looks at them with this very cold stare, and you swear for a second you almost see a, some sort of a spark in her golden eye. I'm very sorry for the hardship you've encountered tonight. It looks like in some ways we all have a little more in common. I wish that wasn't the case. You might want to come up with a cover story for what happened at the gallery. I'm sure you'll see it. Uh, preemptive strike. How about a bear escaped from the zoo? Perhaps with mange, might be a plausible story. I'll inform a few of my associates who are currently on the cover. I know a good writer, maybe he can help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much power does the Red Hand have? We don't know. We're still trying to pull the threads. And sadly, they're just one of a number. They're at least the most artistic. Mm. Regardless, we thank you tremendously for the work you've done tonight. And for those that were lost, there are many, many more. 
I would have seen far darker ends were you not there to make these sort of sacrifices. No. I know that's a little consolation in the shadow of this, but you also now know truly what we're up against and sadly what it takes to stop all of them. I don't ask anything more of you unless you feel it's right, should the time come again. But for now, we have our resources. You have our thanks. Whatever else you need to recover. I'm proud of you all. As much as I'm sorry, I'm proud of you. Sometimes what we do seems to be thankless. Believe me, I've thought about walking away many times myself from my earlier years. But then I remember what terrible things may have happened if I hadn't. the challenge of sacrifice. Sometimes you don't get to see the good you've done. You just have to assume. you heroes. And all of us at Candela, thank you. You know what? Take what time you need. We'll leave you for any investigation duty for a bit. Might even show some of you the pharaohs. <laughs> In time. <laughs> Made a stone stuff there, Oggy. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, I think I need a drink. <laughs> As you like, keep your leaves. Take in the memory of what transpired this night, what you've done, what you've endured. We will close this investigation mm. and finish the second dark episode. Oh, man. Was that a success? That was a dicey one. <laughs> that was really dicey. That was Remember that time boy. we said we would save everything to, to, so that we could use it after this one? Yeah. Thank Fucking yeah. God. That was rough. That was a rough one, y'all. Yes. Whoo, them rolls were not in your no. favor tonight. Oh, you couldn't do shit. I have uh, two was, drives left. I have one in Cunning and one in Wish. I've have. got. Three. Is this the moment when we... we gotta now use... we are. We are finished with this investigation, okay. and for the next episode, we'll pick up whenever the next moment is we can, we can discuss then. But let's go ahead and fill in. Our circle okay. sheet. Your circle sheet. Okay. Yeah, Successes okay. here. So, going back to the questions here. Okay. Yes. Did you contain or destroy a source of bleed? We did. Yes. yes. Did you provide Both? comfort or support for those affected? We sure did. We tried to comfort Duder. We tried to uh, Duder oh, be the, true, the stin, husband stin, and stin, 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 Stinky. 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 Good old Stinky. Yeah, yeah. Did you bring something of importance back of a Candela Obscura to study? We brought them the the samples. Flesh. Yeah. Bacon. Ray Bacon. And. XP triggers. Okay. Did everyone hit one? <laughs> what did you trigger? Deceive. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, I got three. I had yeah. do something illegal, make a deal, or deceive. Did I do any of those? Yeah, you took a you police officer's badge. Yeah, you fucking. And stole his gun. And stole his gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's See, pretty illegal. I did something illegal. <laughs> that's pretty illegal, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. It's kind of on the top of the list from a lot of people's perspective. <laughs> uh, yep. um, Arlo. Consulted my text. Yes. yes. And acted bizarre. Yeah, you got that. 
Uh, <laughs> so it's pretty. Cool. It's close. I definitely made a plan to punch that man in the face. Uh, <laughs> I did sprinkle. Sprinkle I did some stuff. sprinkles, and when we did fork on the road, I suggested which way to go. That's I true. felt like I was being yeah, more planny, so yeah, I'm gonna say make a plan. Okay, there you go. So that's four XP down the uh, down the track. All right. All righty. All right. Now we have three stitch left, three refresh left, and four train left. Well, we should definitely take the I don't, four train. I don't yeah. need stitch. So we should I all don't need stitch We should all train up because we've all got one yep. game left. Yep. So right. everybody so take a train. Everybody gets a die. Choo-choo. Are you are you tracking our hits along with us? I got twisted up. Do you know if I have two bodies or one? Do you recall? Room. You had two bodies. I had two body, right? Yeah. Okay, so you should stitch <laughs> up. Okay. Take a stitch. Yeah, but I don't want to be greedy, McGreedy, because I got I oh, I need a refresh. Okay. Here's the thing: we've got three, yeah. so three people get to take stitch, and three people get to take refresh. Now. I do not need stitch, but I, I you definitely need, stitch. need re- so definitely take, need take refresh. The stitch, okay, I'll yeah, take the stitch. stitch. I have one brain and one bleed. I think I have okay. two brain and two bleed. I still had. Oh. So wait, is that stitch? Stitch is what? Stitch, yeah. stitch wipes them all out. Oh, yeah, you need a stitch yeah, yeah, yeah. too. Okay. All right, I'm taking I'm taking a stitch. I'm clear. His body, sorry. A stitch and a scar. Okay, I'm clear. So refresh. I. Well, definitely. I don't. I don't. You should take the last stitch, Augie. Do you have any I marks? I have one brain, one bleed. So take it. I've take only it. got one bleed, and I can use a ward on the next game to kind of mitigate that. So okay. Okay. Alrighty. So, so, so now we've got three refresh. Spent all stitches. Oh, okay. Spent all stitches. Refreshes. How many do you have? We've got three refreshes. Damn. Okay. I am sauced out on yeah. stuff I'm so go- on take, stuff I'm yeah, good at. You didn't take one yeah. the last time, so take I it. I didn't take anything but a trip. I don't want to be greedy. Take it, Robin. Yeah, okay. I'm sauced out. Okay, you take one too, Anji. And then who needs that more? You how many drives do you have left? Two? Okay. What do you have? I've got four drives left. Two in, in cunning and two Can in intuition. Little? No. So you take it. And I get my resistance so get back as well? Back. You do. Dri- okay. I took a train. Take all your drives back. Okay. Fun. Okay. All righty. So a refresh and a stitch. Now, now that we've spent the resources. And, and you get them all back? <clears throat> yes, you get all your Yeah, you get all your resistances and drives back by right? oh, right. using a refresh. Okay. So who didn't get one? You? I, I didn't take a, a refresher, but I didn't. I, didn't, I have almost oh, no you're marks. Look, and you're looking good. I've got four right. drives left. Okay. Here's the fun bit. Uh, normally, when we do this, we would wait to fill the illumination track before we get to level up the circle, but because we only have one more episode of this arc, and for the circle's advancement for now, we're going to go ahead and, and just show an example of this and to get to play with it. We're going to go ahead and, and at least choose an ability. A new circle ability? Oh a new my circle God. ability. Oh, fun. Yay, okay. okay, okay, okay. You, don't get to, you don't get to spend any more resources, because even if you got them all full, you won't be able to use them before oh, the next right. one, which okay. are our last episode. Anyway. And what is so you still go into the last episode what we have it. Okay, so stand And you three. fill the illumination chart, which would be like one to two sessions from now, depending on what cool. transpires. But we do get to choose another circle ability? You get to choose one more circle ability. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, stamina training. At the beginning of an assignment, check out how many milestones are filled. Your circle has that many gilded die at the beginning of that assignment that anyone may add to any roll. Oh. Once a die has been rolled, it is expended. So that only be one? Yep. Check the milestones are filled. One, yeah. Because we only have one milestone filled out. Yeah. We're one, we're okay. one shy. You can you max out one shy per yeah. session. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's no fun. So we got one on this round. So we would all get one gilded die. I think one would, to, to, I think to one share. Total to share, or we would all get one. Oh no! It's no it'll get, yeah, it'll get so one. That one, one person. Let's do. I don't like it. What else okay. we got? I don't like Nobody it. left behind. When a member of your circle takes a scar and drops incapacitated, which has happened, you guys. Twice. Any rolls a player makes in that scene to protect them or get them out of danger have plus one d six. Plus one die. Yeah. Okay. Plus one die. Okay, that's a okay. decent one. Interdisciplinary. I can read. Don't look at me. When choosing a new ability during character advancement, oh. once per game, okay, no. Uh, oh wait, once per campaign, these characters choose an ability from characters, specialty, oh, so, when choosing a new, no, we don't get that, right? You know what, as this is an example of this, let's go ahead and level you up on this as well. So just, what does that mean? Just, just because we only have one more episode in this, uh-huh. and yeah, both yeah, to yeah. kind of show it off and to try it for fun here. So you get to choose two different options at character advancement. They're on the circle sheet. They're add one stat point, Add two drive points, oh. take a new ability, or guild an additional stat. You get to choose two of those. So we can take two in anything, or wait, say that right. again? One stat point somewhere. Okay, one in, yeah, one, 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 one action. One okay, one action. action. Uh, you can add two drive points Whoa. to any of those. You can take a new ability on your character sheet, 
where you can gild an additional stat. Oh shit! Oh, wow. yeah. These are all really good options. But that, two okay, of, two so of each knowing... of those options are just one. Two of each of those. So oh. knowing that that two is of what leveling up looks like. Now let me reread that one. When you're circled. When choosing a new ability during character advancement, once per campaign, each character may choose an ability from a character specialty outside of their own. Oh. So we could choose somebody else's specialty. Oh. So. And we can choose two from these four options, you said? Correct. Just oh, one two? From two? Two? Two. Yep, two, choose two, two different two, options. Two, 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 now two. mind you, it, we don't have to decide right now, because some of these especially might take a little time yeah. to read and yeah, look through. Yeah. We can just call them out uh, before we begin the next session, okay. if you would like okay. to. If, that, if that's what we pick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do we all, we would all have to take the same thing, or can no, you choose in be like, I'm gonna do two drive, and I'm gonna do... Mm, yeah, we can all choose things. different okay. things. Resource management, when your circle hits a milestone in the illumination track, which we haven't, earn back one stitch, refresh, or train resource. Okay. Uh, and one last run, when you select this ability, the next time you fill your illumination track, your circle will retire from service. I think that's gonna happen Everyone anyway. takes all four options during this character advancement. Ooh. Oh, so we could take all four options, but we're going to retire anyway. But we're going to be done. If but we don't have to retire. have to retire. have to retire. There might be options I mean, down the road to bring it, it back. It took 10 whole years for Charlie to get a let's, scar. Yeah, yeah. I feel like her luck like, is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. do now the good one. Let's do the OB yeah, one. No man, yeah. no man left behind. No one left behind. Nobody left behind. Nobody left behind. I like nobody left behind. We could have used that this time. Yeah. Nobody left behind. It's a great one. Which one did you want? somebody else's powers and extra Oh, you want to do interdisciplinary? Yeah. Oh, is that what interdisciplinary? Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, interdisciplinary just... means that as you're leveling up now, you can choose an ability from other yeah, it's sheets. Like oh, that. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. That's that, the that, other. We can look sorry. at all Circle the ability. other sheets and. and oh, I and, misunderstood. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. That. Well, we'll go ahead and research that a bit. We'll decide what your levels up, and we'll uh, we'll work towards that for the next episode. All right. Just playing around for fun because it's our first outing on this system. Yeah, let's we let's got mess it. around a little bit. I want to see where this can go. Exactly. There's so much to share. Oh man. All right, now we have all the resources spent, the circle resources. Uh, let's start over here. Augie, how do you get stitched up and refreshed? Ooh, okay. Um, I am going to go over to Arlo's house mm -hmm. um, and Oh, uh, Mr. August? Yes, uh, August James. August, yes, uh, in, uh, I'll lose in, in her room. <laughs> okay, great. Um. Oh, hey. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't see you there. <laughs> okay, what are you doing here? Um, I actually, I just, I wanted to see if this is very, if too forward, you let me know. Um. May I take a bath? Augie, of course you can. Okay. Here, take my room. Okay. Yes, of course. Thank you so much. In fact, why don't you get cleaned up and then we can go on a fun little trip. Okay. Okay. I'll step out while a bath is drawn for Augie. I get in the bath, just full bubbles. <laughs> bubble beard, <laughs> bubble hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just having a lot of fun right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I get out and, and all fresh and clean. Cleanest you've been in a long time. Hair's looking all nice. <laughs> shiny sheet, shiny cheeks. <laughs> You'll come back and Post we'll just... sets. <laughs> <laughs> um, Pinchy. Uh, immediately approached by uh, one of the your, your handmaid being like, would you like some new clothes? Oh, oh, wonderful! I was, Miss Thomas. This is Augie. Um, Hello, Augie. Very nice to meet you. I was you. going to take Augie shopping for a new suit. All right, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the offer. You can. Uh, you know what, though? You should take Miss Thomas up on her offer. Maybe put on some of my father's clothes in the meantime, and we can get you something that fits better at the store. Oh, right, that works for me. Large. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's big, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then I'll take I'll take Augie to the uh, suit maker and and buy him a suit. Oh, I love that. 
Whew. Quite refreshing. Looking very nice. Very refreshed. Right. As part of the process, too, uh, you can get sewn up in a little bit of the bumps and things that you've taken um, by the same <laughs> the same way that you get help yes, as the boat Mr. as well. But, um, best. but indeed, a refreshing day out on New Farron Streets to get yourself a new suit. I love it. Charlotte, how do you get stitched <laughs> and refreshed? Good question. Um, Charlotte is uncharacteristically demoralized at the end of this experience. It's taken 10 years before she took any kind of serious damage of any kind and really hasn't since she was a child. Um, and so rather than going back to uh, rather than going back to the site unseen, um, she goes directly to the eaves and to the Danbury estate and walks in, sort of staggers in, and um, sees Sherman. Um, tell me she's clear today. Yes, um, uh, she is somewhat um, present today, if you'd like to visit. Would you, uh, would you call me a doctor? Of course, yes. <clears throat> uh, and again, she goes up to Gertrude. And knowing how much Gertrude has seen, and that she is present today, um, Mum? Charlie, wonderful to see you. Thank you for coming by. <laughs> Gertrude, Mum. Oh dear, you've, you've walked to a threshold, haven't you? I'm so sorry. Little part of us goes away each time we do. I can't help but remember what it, what it was like when I first came to you. When you took me in. And while this is terrifying, I think of that young man that I took in. And I don't want anything to happen to him ever. When you were scared, how did you keep going? I just did. What other choice is there? True. The longer you live this life, the more you realize. If you don't make the sacrifice, who else will? I'm so sorry you sacrificed so much for me. I'm not. I'm not at all. You'd be proud of me. This young man is, well, you'd be proud of him. I already have. She reaches out and grabs your hand and goes like, oh. <laughs> shall we, uh, shall we take a walk in the garden? I, I think I would love that. I would. <laughs> kind of sits up and puts her arm around yours. And you both walk down and walk through the beautiful garden, the flowers that she has pruned and kept since she reached the end of her journeys with Candela. Mm. Here's the stories or how much you wish to convey from your experiences and offers what sort of backseat wisdom she might have offered if she were in the same situation. I'd also like to, I'd also like to ask her any advice she has giving her, this time I'm giving her exactly the story, not the fairy tale version. Mm. And anything, any bit of advice, any bit of information that she might be able to give me that might help me, um, I, f I feel like that's partly where my new survey mm -hmm. skill comes from. She stops and turns to you with a big smile and takes both of your hands in hers. 
and turns very serious. Whatever you're willing to give, they're willing to give more. So give everything. I think I can put some tea on for her. <laughs> yeah, and so I'll just spend the few days there reading books, trying to... My version of refresh is learn more, learn more, do more, because mm -hmm. now I know I have a handicap that I need to work with. Indeed. So I want as much knowledge as I can possibly glean in the next few days. I love it. Mm -hmm. Dr. Margrove, how do you stitch and refresh yourself? Suppose I'll head back home. <laughs> and I do. <laughs> I go to Howard's house, and uh, he walks in the door, no one to greet him. No pets, no wife, <laughs> no kids, no nothing. Uh, it's quiet. And he goes in and slowly uh, turns on the gas sconces. He doesn't quite like electricity yet, and he likes reading by firelight. Gets comfortable, takes off his coat, and uh, finds his way into his office slash study. And uh, just sort of silently stunned about the evening's events. And walks past his desk, and as he does, there's a small device on the corner. Uh, it looks technical, but in an old way. There's a little switch on the top, and he just flips it. And as he does this, sort of blue iridescent mist sort of starts to come out of it, but he doesn't pay any mind to it. And he grabs his pipe, and he grabs his little box of tobacco, and he uh, walks to his chaise by the bay window and where he's been reading his books, and he sort of leans back and thinks to himself as he opens up his tobacco box and takes out just some very normal tobacco, stuffs it in, and on the side, another little secret switch. A little side thing slides out. And inside of it, if Augie would know this, uh, it's uh, just a little bit of Scarlet Shake, mm -hmm. uh, the doctor's only vice. And he sprinkles a bit on the top of his tobacco. And as he does, that mist starts to form behind him over his shoulder in this sort of featureless, but very clearly shape of a face, and he leans back, lights his pipe, takes a big hit, and says, well, Dean, into the unknown. Let's find Arlo's bow. And as he takes a big puff, that blue smoke goes straight into his no! newly panned head. His eyes go wide as saucers. And I guess the rest is up to your imagination. <laughs> and I think that concludes our second episode of Candela Obscura. Uh -oh. <laughs> awesome, that was oh intense, y'all. Uh, Amazing! <laughs> oh, mm. Big love to oh, my wonderful my players. Oh. Bobby Damon, Laura Bailey, <laughs> Anjali Bimani, na, na, na. Ashley Johnson, I am your GM, your Game Master Matthew Mercer. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.